Uh, good morning, everybody, and getting a bit of an echo here. Test. 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 Let's try now. Oh, perfect. All right, sorry about that. those technical difficulties there for a second, folks. We just had to do some uh, volume work. But anyway, uh, welcome back to day two here at uh, uh, beautiful uh, Guilford College uh, down here in Greensboro, North Carolina. We are here for the second day of the inaugural uh, Rugby Showcase South Tournament being hosted by Guilford College and our good friend Christine Newcomb, head coach of the women's program. Uh, so thank you very much, Christine, for what was a terrific day yesterday, and we suspect a half day of action-packed rugby today as well, which you see is kicked off already. This is uh, Wando Wahinis versus Aspatuck Valley um, in day two again, and uh, let's get to the uh, call and the play action. So Aspatuck, Aspatuck on the front foot. Looks like ball's been turned over going to Wando. Oh, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to get a knock call right there at some point if the referee is allowing the advantage to be played here as Aspatuck gets on the front foot. And there it is, folks. Uh, that, uh, uh, that potential uh, infraction is going to be overlooked as uh, Aspatuck uh, was uh, on the charge and was able to put this down for the score. So good start from Aspatuck. Steal your pen for a second. Five points with the kick to come. And folks, we're waiting on an Aspatuck roster right now because uh, we noticed this morning that uh, the one that came through, actually the jerseys may not be matching up. Those things happen on a tournament weekend, so bear with us shortly as we get the names to you for Aspatuck. Wando has been provided, and we'll be calling out uh, your favorite ruggers uh, for you at home. Kick is good. Well struck, 7-zip Aspatuck. Get you here back with the restart shortly. Wando Wahinis with the uh, restart here. Good kick, doesn't look like it's, uh, pardon me, not so good a kick, doesn't look like it's gonna make it the prerequisite 10, or it does, but uh, the referee will call it and bring it to uh, scrum down at the 50. First opportunity this morning to see the pack down action between these two teams. Based on the shank kick, the put in will go to Aspatuck. Good pack work from uh, Wando, making it a little difficult back there. Aspatuck with the ball, nine's able to get it off. Ball moving well through the hands of Aspatuck. Oh, unfortunate there for the 14, the winger. Fullback picks it up. Good rucking work from uh, Aspatuck there. That's me, uh, Mia Clotter on the carry right there. Uh, sophomore uh, in the front row who's, uh, I suspect, uh, colleges who are watching, you'll be watching out for this young player. Ball's turned over to Wando. Wando starting to move the ball well on the front foot. Penalty infraction, looks like knock forward. Sir is gonna bring the mark back. Okay, we, we have one sub for 
last name is Hall. She's sitting on the sideline. We have no idea what her number is. Okay, thank you. You're this is your pen, too. Thanks. Okay, thank you to the Aspatuck family for getting us the rosters out here. Updated. Wando put in from Ackerman. <clears throat> Ball's moving well into the hands of Phillips. Ackerman on the back of that ball. Oh, unfortunately, some early jittery hands right there, and it looks like we'll get another not call, and there it is. So uh, weather conditions are perfect for rugby. I think the one thing to note, though, is uh, pretty heavy dew on the field for the first game this morning, so that ball will be fairly slick. Uh, I don't think it's an indication of... Um, <clears throat> Um, what the you know what uh, the capabilities are out there? It's just we're going to need a little bit of sun to dry that field off, make it uh, easier to handle that ball. Nice little late man pick there from uh, Weiner. Gets a hard 15 yards. Ball secured back. There's Clotter off the back of the ruck. Clotter bumping through. Number 12, Smith, on the carry. She stopped but able to get the ball off to her counterpart, 13, Doherty. Try to get your number there in a sec, folks. Looks like uh, Aspatuck threatening again. Pretty close to the... And we've got a whistle. Got a penalty mark. High tackle. Aspatuck penalty. I suspect they'll go, yep, the toe and go. Ball to Clotter. Clotter looking for that try zone, and I think she's found it. Well done. So that brings the score 12 to 0. Uh, Aspatuck Valley with the kick to come. Aspatuck uh, perennially a strong side and, uh, you know, showing it down here today as well. Uh, this is a great event. This is the regional sh showcase south. Um, this is the inaugural year and day two. And this is the event that brings uh, the EGRL south teams together, uh, as well as bringing northern sides down as well um, to get together. And, and really the kickoff of the... Um, uh, of the EGRL season for, uh, uh, for the league that uh, spans from uh, Connecticut to South Carolina. So really exciting rugby yesterday and uh, seeing more of it again today. On the kicking duties there was Kennedy and the strike is good, 14-0. About seven minutes into the first half, playing 20-minute uh, halves today. And uh, for those who were listening yesterday, we'll try to get you some updates on some of those injuries that uh, had happened yesterday. And uh, we heard kind of through the grapevine, but not confirmed that everybody's well, feeling good. Um, but, um, you know, want to make sure we can get you that info as well um, shortly. Wando ball up, nice good kick deep, good hang time. Fielded off the knee. Oh, wow. Off that bounce, and then uh, Wando's able to pick it up. That's Miller on the carry, on the recovering carry. Nine off the back there, Ackerman. Wando making some hay here. Garrett, good run. Oh, a little bit of a poach there. A uh, little cherry pick, but a big tackle. Try saving tackle by the 15, Golson. Aspatuck on the front foot again. That's Mikowski on the carry. Ball's out to the two, Hill. Hill's got support. Nine on the back, Kennedy, moving the ball well. Moving with the ball well. Kennedy looking for space, brought down. Ball stripped. Wando on the front foot. This is being played between the 22s, folks. Tough, tough rugby out there. Big carry there from, I believe, Arthur. Ball moving okay. A little bit of an errant pass, but it's covered. 
Wanda with the big ruck and support. We have a penalty call far side. Try to get you a read on that. Aspatuck being penalized. I didn't catch the, uh, the arm signal from the referee, so uh, they're just getting back there 10 meters and uh, Hey, I'm being joined by uh, my counterpart, uh, Brian Ahern, as uh, field two games have uh, not kicked off quite yet. So nice to have my uh, partner in crime with, uh, with me here today. We were both saying uh, yesterday that uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little lonely on the mic when you're accustomed to uh, having a, a, a second uh, set of eyes and ears uh, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the right to you. Still looking at the wrong things, but you never know. Oh, you Sometimes go. we get it right. <laughs> Rarely. 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 So, Brian, uh, Aspatuck putting out a pretty good performance here, already 14 points up in the first 10 minutes of the half, uh, and uh, just doing what they do well, keeping that ball keeping that ball in close. When the opportunities arise, they're moving the ball wide. Um, nice, good carries from uh, Weiner and Clotter already. Uh, Clotter dotting it down on the uh, second try effort right here and then converted by Kennedy. There goes Smith on a break. Bree Smith tearing towards the line and she's in. I tell you what, I, I really like uh, her in the five jersey. I think that is really a, a great spot for her. Yeah, nice tall kid, strong, yeah. fast runner. Um, definitely, if you're a college, you need to be looking at her for part of your tight five for sure. Absolutely. So that's uh, score number three for um, Aspatuck. Aspatuck's been looking good all weekend. Absolutely. Um, we're just over the 10 minute marker. There's three scores for Aspatuck already. Uh, like we were saying, they're, they've been perennially a strong side since we started playing against them. And uh, you know they're just showing their work down here. Well, they have a lot of seniors this year. So I think they'll, uh, you know, they have a good chance of going pretty far. And they are the EGRL champions. So yeah, yeah. You know, other teams are gonna be trying to knock them off their perch and they're going to have a lot of work to do to, to stay there and they're so far so good. So far so good, yeah. And, you know, EGRL is a young uh, concept and league and uh, they could be the first ones to actually back-to-back -back it. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I'm putting, that's a safe bet for me. Yeah. And the kick was good, again, from it's Smith. It's early yet, it's early yet. Uh, I'm betting early. I'm putting the odds out in uh, Vegas on yeah. this one. So that again, the uh, kick was good, and that was uh, Kennedy. Kennedy on the yep. duties. Molly Kennedy, she had a good day kicking yesterday as well. She's moving the ball, uh, you know, distributing well. Yeah. Once it does come out to the back line. Yeah, she's also a handy independent runner too. Uh, she yeah. had some nice yardage being made over here just before the last score. Ball's up, good high ball, well fielded by Clotter. Again, you're going to hear this young lady's name quite a bit because she is making hay out there. Uh, started last year when we saw her at uh, Rugby Showcase East. One uh, of the things that impresses me most about her is her footwork. Like, yeah, absolutely. You know, people expect a, a prop to be a straight runner. She, she's able to bounce outside you know, and take those couple of ste steps so she doesn't take that direct contact. Yeah, so yeah. she, she makes looks for that soft herself. shoulder yeah. and uh, she finds it most of the time. And that's, I think, what gives her those extra yards, right? Absolutely, like, yeah, yeah. Why work hard if there's space there, right? Yeah, exactly. So scrum down just uh, just over the 50. Uh, Wando pack pretty good actually, giving them a bit of what for on the first pack down, the first couple of pack downs earlier. Good coaching, good technique. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Balls out. Ackerman off the back there. Oh, a little bit low. Phillips trying to control it there, but looks like uh, we're going to get uh, another knock call. Yeah, yeah it, it kind of came out at, at uh, Arthur's uh, shoe tops. So. A little Go bit of a googly. Yeah, great googly moogly. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, the, you know, the ball's a little slippery because the grass is fairly dewy on these absolutely gorgeous fields here. 
Yeah, I was saying that earlier because I think it's important to make note of that for the folks at home because, uh, you know, the, these are competent ruggers, and the knocks you're seeing is just caused by all the dew that's on the field right now. Yeah. Just need that sun to come out and burn it off. And great job by Coach Christine Newcomb and everybody here at Guilford College for, for putting up with us for the last two days. Yeah, yeah. Great, 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 great show so far. Ball moving well. O'Neill out to win. Oh, it's 13 to Doherty. It looks like. Some big counter rucking there from Wando. Penalty's going to go their way. Looks like potentially offside call, maybe. Ball, uh, ball moving on the weak side over there. Wando working it. Yeah, um, that probably had the opportunity to really swing it towards us because if you look at that line there was plenty of opportunity and a ton of space over here. A lot of space outside, yeah. But that field awareness, I mean, you know, we were talking about it last night, is you get that ball in hand and it's like it's tunnel vision, right? You don't yeah. you don't hear anybody, you don't see anything but the, the green in front of you, you know? Well and that's the the great thing about really trying to grow these U fourteens programs because the longer you you play, the more experience you have and the less you know, yeah. the less narrow your vision is, you know, you see more, you, you're more comfortable looking around knowing you have the space and time. You're absolutely right. More time on the field and that, that, uh, that tunnel vision opens up to, a hundred, you know, that 180 degrees that you need. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And more. Not saying we ever had it when we played. No, we? no, still don't. <laughs> we didn't have too much vision when we were playing in Ireland <laughs> there a few weeks ago. No, we didn't. All right, so ref is setting the scrum. Safety is paramount. Yeah. What are you looking for in a good scrum? You know, I, th I think uh, what we've been talking about is you want that tight five to be working as one unit, right? Because then that's going to free up the opportunity for six, seven, and eight to do that uh, that dirty work on either side of the ball. And when I mean dirty work, the hard work. Um, so you want tabletop flat with a little bit of lift at the engage, uh, just ever so slightly, and then you just want the both of those teams coming together and creating that oh, energy. Oh, there goes Jenny Weiner. Straight up the middle. Yeah. Great big chase Doesn't there. Doesn't have but the support there, but... Oh, well, sport's getting there good. I think that was uh, Smith in behind her. It looked like we had the five there. O'Neill. Out to Doherty. Garrett on the tackle. A nice cut inside by the winger, 14. 14 would be Rollinson. Rollinson. So, Aspetuck knocking again here. Reese oh. Smith. Big turn Real by close. Smith. Aspatuck looking threatening here, and it's in. Chalk up another one for Reese Smith. Nice job there by Aspatuck to really take what was being given. Great run there by Jenny Weiner up the middle. Absolutely. Support got there quickly. So that is going to be, that's three tries. Um, pardon me, that's one, Carry two, the one. three tries already. I, that's going to make that 26 with the kick to come. Every kicker has their own style. The setup is so important. Ball goes exactly where you want it, to, where you point it. So, yeah, she's she's got a she's got a rhythm to it, right? Yeah. It's like this is this is her for the kick, and it seems to be working for her yeah. because she's four for four. That's twenty-eight uh, zero at the moment. Uh, for Aspatuck Valley versus Wando, we should be action wrapping up. Um, I've got about uh, just about 18 minutes, so about two to play, I'd say. Aspatuck putting on a bit of a clinic here. Yeah. Ball Ball's deep. Up. Reese plays it back. Good work there. Let's get it. Oh, called the knock enough. will be called. Okay. Um, Looked yeah. like she had controlled it down, but I, I thought so too. But you know, he's got a better vantage point than we do. Certainly. And we would never say a ref could be wrong on a call. No. No. Oh, God forbid. No. Heaven forfend. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, we're gonna 
better look here at uh, the Wando pack. Yeah, me and Arthur at 10, just waiting for the ball. Hopefully she can get a, a good service and, and get that move and get a score here. Yeah. Get them back in the game. Sneak off the side. Well tackled by Wiener. Pulls out to Arthur. Out Looks to like the we 12. Backwards. That's Skebeth. Okay, so they've got good numbers outside if they can spread it. Signature defense from Aspatuck here, just taking that space, yeah. driving them back. I mean, Wando's moving the ball well, but they're not getting that north, you know, that north movement that they need on the field here, and it's because Aspatuck just. Is, has this stalwart defense they just work hard at it you know it's a simple thing to do it just takes a lot of effort yeah you know uh, the one thing i'll say for for wando is they seem to be taking the ball at a, a standing clatter pace. with a sticking tackle right there yeah i mean it look at uh, where that tackle first happened and, and look at the yardage that uh that Aspatuck has been able to make here on the defensive side of the ball. Well, it's you look, the scrum started it just yeah. outside the 22, and now they're back inside their own half. And they haven't lost the ball. They're just slowly being driven backwards. And you just hear the communicate yield right. I mean, and they've got, they know they're covering that green space in the back because that kick is coming. Yeah. And there it is. There's O'Neill back there. Nice kid. Good rugger. There oh, it is, break outside up the side run. Line. See if we can get a number on that jersey. Remy, I think I believe it is. so. Yeah. Okay, unfortunate they're not releasing penalty turnover. Wando's going to take it, uh, take that ball quick and start moving. They've got room outside if they can get it out there. Aspuck is swarming the inside, and you know, and that seems to be purposeful. And look at this, scraping the field. They understand that there's lanes open over here. There's eyes on that side. They're marking it, making sure. This defensive effort is, uh, I mean, it, it's it's heavy duty. Yeah, yeah. Well structured, well organized, and everybody knows their job, which makes it a whole lot easier. And again, it's it's a very simple concept, but it takes a lot of effort yeah. to continue to do it, right? Yep. It's, you need a lot of gas in the tank. Breeze picking up a little bit here. Not getting the sun that we were getting yesterday. Hopefully uh, that'll help dry the field off a little bit. So Wando has maintained possession of the ball for the last, you know, let's say 10, 12 phases. And they've gone from just outside Aspex 22 to inside their own 22 now. It's it almost like they're, they're in danger of turning it over and giving up a try, and, and they've had possession for the last good five, six minutes. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's interesting. They're both keeping their cool, right? Like Wando's playing under some serious pressure, yeah. and they're holding on to the ball, but Aspatuck is just marching it back, marching it back. Uh, Wando was lucky to get that penalty there to get them on the front foot and get those 10 meters that yeah. you need to kind of get some head of steam going. Big run to the outside. Oh, oh unfortunate Ball for number 17, James. And the ref's going to call a knock on. He's let, not letting the advantage play on this one. Do expect this type of play from Aspatuck, right? Yeah. It's that in-your-face style, whether it's on the offensive or defensive side of the ball. Uh, Wando, though, impressive that they're under this stifling defensive pressure that that black jersey's putting out is they're holding on to the ball. Yeah. Exactly. They're not panicking. They're not giving into those turnovers. I think you called it. How, I mean, how many phases was that? Closing in on probably, probably 15? Yeah, exactly. 20? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, it, you know, to maintain all that pressure is tough yeah. on the Aspatuck side, but then to, to have to be able to deal with it and still maintain the ball, it, that's. Agree more. I mean, it's like, look, I, I, it's um, the score line's pretty, uh, pretty tough at 28-0 uh, for Aspatuck right now for Wando. But you know, they're, um, you know, they're showing some grit. Yeah, yeah, and I, I know they have quite a few young players that are only playing. You know, there's a couple I think that were playing their second or third week of rugby. So, absolutely, absolutely. 
So, yeah, not, not bad from a young team against a, a very seasoned Aspartuck Valley. Exactly. Yeah. So did you I, with I, all the kids? I did not. I, I was enjoying watching the replays of the, uh, of the Six Nations games. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I did walk over to take a couple times because uh, that, that truck was jumping. <laughs> it was bouncing. Yeah, so all the kids were in the back of a, an F-150 uh, pickup truck at their stage, and he might have to check his shocks today because they were... Bouncing up and down, it was it was a lot of fun. A quick stop at Pet Boys for a new suspension. Exactly. <laughs> it was really funny. It was it was a great night last night, hanging out with the players and the coach. Hats off to uh, uh, Lavinia Galarza, who uh, put out a fantastic uh, spread of uh, St. Patrick's Day fair with the help of uh, her husband Nelson as well. Uh, but uh, really, uh, Lavinia was you know manning the outdoor kitchen all day and put out pounds of delicious um, corned beef and potatoes and cabbage and good uh, Irish soda bread and I think we all had a good time last night. Yeah, it was phenomenal and I'm at, at, with that I'm going to take off. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy the banter. <laughs> good luck to talk to yourself again. <laughs> oh God, I'm so boring. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you later. Come back soon. Well-deserved break for both teams here at the half. Let's uh, reset the time so we can keep it honest here. So, unfortunately, my pal Brian is off to field two to call the games over there, but uh, always uh, great to have him uh, sitting side by side and, uh, you know, a couple of laughs and, uh, you know, good, uh, good banter back and forth. Uh, he'll be missed. Uh, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say hello to Coach uh, Tice, Tice uh, who's just walking by from uh, Charlotte Cardinals and uh, getting ready for a game coming up very shortly. There, uh, there is the uh, coaching duo of uh, the Tice family. Uh, nice to see you guys. And uh, also, let me uh, give a quick shout out to the um, AV side of this on field one, who actually pulls all this tech together for us. Uh, uh, wizard behind the camera and uh, the AV, uh, the audio visual, and then Nelson Galarza, his partner in crime, who's uh, doing the camera work on uh, field two. And like I said, Brian Ahern is moving over there to do the commentating on uh, what appears to be the sky blue shirt. Um, okay, let me see what we can get you there. I think we've got Downingtown. <clears throat> It look okay. So the first game, Vienna Wando did not go off. There it looks like. Uh, um, no, pardon me. Uh, we're down here on day two. It looks like West Carroll Downingtown. So that should be a pretty good matchup. Uh, we were talking about Downingtown yesterday, and they've got all the tools. They just seem to come up short, uh, you know, at the end. And it's like, you know, I, I gotta tell you, I, I'm pulling for them because they they are right there on the cusp of making those things happen. I mean, they've got great series of play on the front foot, um, you know, and not certainly not wishing any bad luck to our friends at uh, West Carroll, but uh, you know, would like to see Downingtown get the uh, get the rewards for the hard work, and it's going to be a tough one because that West Carroll team is uh, is an in-your-face, hard-hitting, um, good rugby-playing uh, squad over there. So it's uh, That'd be one to watch, folks, uh, as well. I, I guess, Chris, because we were pinched for time yesterday, we were running this, uh, you know, the halves pretty quick. This actually seems like uh, we're actually taking some time here for the half. Without question. That was a full schedule yesterday for these, uh, these young ladies. Aspatuck taking the field. Ready for uh, live action on uh, on the second half here. Uh, once again, we are at um, Guilford College uh, down here. Beautiful campus in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, the inaugural year and day two of the Rugby Showcase South. 
Uh, we're being hosted by Christine Newcomb, head coach of the women's program here. Uh, Christine, uh, friend of uh, the EGRL and a fantastic partner this weekend. Uh, really, like th this event has gone off without a hitch. These are, if you are watching from home, these fields are as beautiful as they look. Uh, they are in perfect condition, lined correctly. I mean, this is, uh, this is a gem of a day for any of these athletes out there uh, playing rugby today. Wando takes the field and sets up for the restart. Aspatuck ready, covering their corners. Let's get this clock going. Sir checking both sides of the pitch. There's the whistle, kicking off the second half. Aspatuck Valley, Wando. For those, if you're joining us just now, Aspatuck Valley up 28 points to zero for Wando. Wando recovers their own kick and gets on the front foot. Good shape here from Wando. Getting ready to move that ball. Would like to see a little bit more uh, A big tackle there, stifling that ball out of their own 50. Working hard. The shape is good. They just need a little bit of more speed on that front foot. Uh, big pressure here from um, Aspatuck Valley, uh, as we were talking about in the first half. Um, it's a stifling defensive um, uh, uh, structure that they use. And once again, it's, it's, not a, uh, it's not a hard thing to do. It just takes a lot of work and effort. And you just have to be relentless with it uh, and as I, was, as I was saying before you need that gas in the tank you got to be fit to be able to do it as well as they do so once again Wando holding on to the ball but this Aspatuck Valley defense just pressing and pressing Wando losing space there's the kick from who I believe was Arthur it's going to get fielded here by Aspatuck uh, I did not see the arm go up for what looked like could have been a knock play will continue off the back of that ruck for Aspatuck was number six, Perkle. Perkle again into a big carry here for number one, Mikowski. Still going, still going, supports there. Oh, ball's poached. Nice work from Wando there. Nice little turnover right there north of uh, their try zone. They're going to try to work the ball out. I suspect they're going to try to put a boot to it here, but ball's brought down. There's the boot, releasing a little bit of pressure. If it finds touch, that'll be the release that they need. It does not. And there's touch. That'll give Wando the needed break that they, uh, the, the, they're, they're going to want to have here because that Aspatuck Valley pressure is pretty heavy duty. A little less bidet, which is nice. We don't have rosters blowing off the tables and uh, making us crazy, but uh, you know, could use a little bit of sunshine to burn that dew off a little bit earlier. Line out, Wando. Wando easily fields the ball. Nice ball off the top there. Looks like there was a call, maybe not straight. Pure soap. Not straight is the call, uh, so it'll result in a scrum down at the five meter uh, with a uh, turnover ball to uh, Taspatuck for the put in. I'm spoiled over here today with. Uh, Screens giving me better shots of the action for my 53-year-old eyes. Aspatuck moving the ball well here. That looked like the number 12, Gebberth, if I'm not mistaken. Big tackle there from Wando. The number 13, Cumby.
ball being worked well from Aspatuck right there. Kennedy off the back of that ruck. And folks, that looks like Clotter once again chalking up three scores in the, uh, two scores in the first half and her third one in the second half. Uh, give that young lady a round of applause. That is a hat trick uh, for her in this game. The score zero uh, with the kick to come. I suspect Kennedy duties. Thank you. We were just offered Krispy Kreme donuts, and I I will not partake because. Thank you, Scott Cirillo. Signature Kennedy eyeing her targets. We'll get you a word from our sponsors very shortly. Thanks, Chris, for the. Nice big boot from Kennedy. Unfortunately, slices it across the front, but uh, it was a nice strike, uh, just the target off just a slight bit. So that's going to keep it at 32 zip, about uh, six minutes into the second half of uh, Wando versus Aspatuck. <clears throat> Wando on the restart, number 15, Novello with the, uh, with the kicking duties. Good high ball, good hang time. Well fielded back there. Try to get you a jersey number there in a second, folks. Man, Aspatuck Valley on the front foot. Hill with some a big, big carry here, just shaking tackles, taking that ball a good 20 yards. That's great stuff. Number six, Hercule off the back of that ruck. We've got a player down. Uh, unfortunately, Mikowski is down. Uh, everybody taking a knee there. We're hoping this young lady's gonna be okay. Both teams calling themselves in to have a quick chat amongst themselves. You know, once again, uh, what you're seeing um, out here today is, uh, you know, the decision making, everything that's happening is all on the field. You'll notice, you, you know, for those folks newer to the game, you'll notice that there's not a lot of coaching from the sidelines. Uh, the coaching in rugby is done during the week, and then it's up to the captains and the uh, pack leaders to make it all come together when it comes to the, uh, the first whistle and to the final whistle. It's really the... Uh, the weight of those decisions and how they play, obviously how they play is gonna be on the player's soldier, uh, so shoulders. And uh, it's kind of an interesting way to take it. It's really, it's, it's basically saying it's your game at this point. We've, we've done everything we're supposed to do during the week. Now take it out there and put it together. And it's, it's impressive to watch. We've got some booming jets suspect uh, military because uh, we can't see it and that thing's a moving. Uh, I'm sure time is off at the moment, so let's uh, get a word from our sponsors here. Um, so um, sponsors, uh, Best Logistics and Transportation. Best isn't just our name, it's in our, ben it, it, it's our benchmark. Uh, rugby New Jersey support and governorship of the New Jersey School and of New Jersey School and Club Rugby, and Morris Rugby. Morris Rugby provides significant resources support as a founding partner of Rugby Showcase. Base Camp 31. Last but not least, providing administrative and event support in support of its mission of healthy community. Okay, that's good news. Is that we've got Mikowski coming off the field under her own power. Uh, sorry to see her limping off, but um, certainly good to see her. Uh, up on her feet and moving uh, a little bit gingerly off the field. Play action should resume here um, just in about a minute. Hey, Chris, the mic's body, it feels like it's going in and out. Is it sound? Yeah? Okay. Sorry, folks, just checking in on uh, the audio there. I felt like it might be going in and out, but Chris confirmed that uh, we sound okay. Other than me rambling away all day.
Okay, play action resumes with scrum down here on the near side of the field. Uh, and it looks like it'll be a uh, Aspatuck put in. Wando scrum pretty, uh, very competent. Um, so, uh, you know, not, not a walk in the park for Aspatuck here who also uh, packs down pretty, uh, pretty handily. Number nine for Aspatuck Kennedy with a nice little sneaky play right there off the back and she's shaking tackles. It looks like she's gonna get in there, folks. And she does. So Kennedy takes that ball off the back of that scrum down and uh, bursts onto the weak side, bursts off to the weak side and uh, makes a probably a good uh, 25, 30 yard run and dots it down for five. That's gonna make it 37-0 with the kick to come. Kennedy on the duties. So dotted down in the far corner, this is gonna make that kick pretty challenging. Uh, but uh, as we saw before, uh, she's, uh, she's got a hell of a good form and a great strike. So it's not out of the realm of possibility here at all. Reese picking up a little bit. Oh, Reese Smith on the kicking duties. We're going to change it up a little bit. Kennedy, Kennedy going to take a, a well-deserved breather after that uh, that uh, sneaky nine ball off the back of that uh, scrum down. Really nice work. Great strike from Reese. Oh, unfortunately, just uh, puts it across the front of the post, but uh, the mustard was on that ball. It, uh, had the uh, aim been a slightly better, uh, that would have been good for two. Anyway, uh, the score will remain at this point, uh, 37 Aspatuck Valley, Wando zero. Uh, and uh, again, nice uh, little score right there from Kennedy, the scrum half. The restart will fall into the hands of the number eight, Cook. Cook, with a nice ball up there, finds a little bit of green space through the hands. Oh, attacking run here. From Kennedy again. Kennedy being driven back here hard from Wando. Nice little run there on that recover. Ball a little bit sloppy on the far side there. Okay, so a uh, mishandled ball right there will result in a, uh, what do we got there? It's looking like a scrum down. Right on the far side paint. There's that sun that we need. Hopefully that'll dry off the field a little bit for these, uh, for both these teams. Sir, having a few words with uh, both front rows. Wando put in. Nice clean ball off the back of that scrum down. Oh, unfortunately, loose through the hands there. That's not uh, what you want to happen against this. You for those big tackle there from number 14 King ball's gone loose knocked forward resulting in another scrum down 
It's looking like uh, 13 on Wando. Uh, Cumbie has the uh, has the nine duties against Kennedy in the black. Oh! On the feed, the ball was kicked forward into the Aspatuck Valley uh, front row, uh, and then uh, their nine, Kennedy, was able to uh, uh, cleanly, and they are once again on the front foot. on the carry, making hard yards. Nice little dish there to the 12. That's Smith. Smith making the hard yard. She's down just north of there. Reese Smith looking for it, and I think she's got it, folks. That's going to be two for Smith here. Smith makes it 42 to 0 with the kick to come. Uh, folks, my uh, watch is showing about 16 minutes into the second half here, but not sure if uh, the injury assessment earlier. Uh, so we'll have to play with uh, official time being held on the field. Um, based on this, we'd have about three minutes of rugby to play, but let's see uh, what, what happens here. I mean, they may be playing through the injury time uh, because uh, this is day two and uh, winding uh, winding down and uh, trying to get everybody on the road but uh, to get home at a reasonable hour but let's see oh unlucky there for Kennedy uh, hits the far hits the near post but uh, the score will remain here 42 Aspatuck Valley 1-0 Breezier and colder than yesterday, Chris. Ball's up. Nice kick, finds a little bit of green space. They're getting the bobble that they want back there. They're able to connect with uh, Aspatuck Valley uh, just north of the 22. Wando putting some pressure on here. That looked like uh, Weiner on the carry. Ball moving well through the hands. That's uh, O'Neill making good ball distribution here for uh, for Aspatug Valley. Decent defensive effort. O'Neill on the move, moving that ball really well. Oh, unfortunately, knocked forward over there on the number 11, uh, Remy. Aspatuck Valley putting that front foot action right out there for everybody to see. And, uh, you know, I think Wando uh, happy to get that call over there, kind of stop that forward momentum that they started getting going over there on the far side. Cumbie with the put in. Oh, it's kicked forward again. Super unfortunate here for Wando. Good ball received right there through the hands of uh, O'Neill. Moving that ball really well. Looking for that support, and there it is in the form of the 15, and that is Novello. Novello still on the move, brought down number 14, her counterpart Rollinson there for the support. Big carry from Smith. Smith still moving. Smith's going in. That's 47-0, folks, with uh, Smith's second half try here. That's what you want to see from a ball carrier, folks, and particularly in that 12 jersey is just those legs pumping, looking for those soft shoulders and making those yards. And I tell you what, I mean, just powerful, powerful running right there is what you were seeing because that, that was broken tackle after broken tackle and carrying players with her. Nice work by Smith. 
and her teammate Smith will be on the kicking duties. Nice strike from Smith and the ball's good. That'll bring it to 49-0. Wando Wahini's jogging it back to the 50. You like to see that there's no heads down out there. They've had a tough game, uh, but the, uh, you know, the culture's good. That's super important. Words from encourage words of encouragement from both uh, parental sides. Can be heard in the background. Shout out to all the parents who uh, make the time for these events every weekend. You know, a lot of these folks uh, don't have driver's licenses, the ones on the pitch, and uh, somebody's got to get them here. So uh, nice work there. Reese Smith brought down. Oh, she's not. She's able to break through that tackle, but she's brought down south of the 10. Nice little carry here. Look to be the five. Smith, part, pardon me. Ball's in O'Neill's hands, capable, right to Wiener. Weiner with the big carry. Good ball distribution. O'Neill again. Finally, we'll get a jersey number for this young lady right here. Number 15, Novello brought down right here. 16 uh, with the help. Unfortunately, we don't have a uh, number for the 16, a name for the number. 14, Rollinson on the carry. Perkle on the back of that ruck, moving the ball well. Big carry here from the two, Hill. Help is there. Nags in the 25 jersey. That looked like Mikowski. Trying to get the ball off there. Nice work by Perkle off the back of these rucks. Oh, ball's unfortunately knocked forward there. Folks, uh, th that's it for uh, this first game of the second day of the uh, Rugby Showcase South. Uh, what we were just watching uh, at home, if you're just joining us, is uh, Aspatuck Valley uh, versus Wando Wahinis, uh, and uh, a really uh, impressive showing by Aspatuck Valley here with a 49-0 uh, blank sheet win um, against the Wahinis. Okay, folks, give us a second while we change up our rosters. It looks like uh, so game two here. This should be a good one, folks, as well. Uh, Doylestown versus uh, Raleigh Cobras. Boy, that never happens. You flip the page and both rosters are there. <laughs> How about that? So saw some really uh, competent rugby out of both these sides yesterday, and uh, uh, this should be a pretty good clash between these two teams. So uh, I think we're up for uh, you know some uh, good live action again. So we'll. Right back at it uh, shortly. We'll take a quick break here and uh, uh, wet the whistles and uh, be right back.
Okay, folks, live action just about to resume here with uh, Doylestown versus uh, Cobras. Uh, should be a good uh, matchup here. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, uh, the number 11 jersey, Aspatuck Remy, who I was unfortunately unable to get a good look see at her jersey number throughout the whole game. But some big, big carries on that far side of the field. Really well done today, young lady. Ball is up, Cobras field it well. That's the number one, Abigail Sorensen. Looking for the ball there. Big carry in here by uh, Cobras. Taken down just south of the 10 right there by Doylestown. Cobras, great form here, uh, great shape on the uh, offensive. And a big, big run here from the 13. And I believe we are seeing in the 13 jersey, uh, Myers. Good ball off the back there, nine. Delaney, unfortunately, comes off the shoulder of first receiver. Oh! Advantage was called already. Uh, Sir will bring it back for the knock. Number 15, Calhoun again, seeing her on the carries there. And number 11 working in tandem with her uh, for Cobras, which was uh, uh, Avery. Hope so. Let other folks know because we've got plenty. <laughs> Okay, first pack down between these two teams, uh, both solid scrummagers, uh, so looking forward to uh, what we've got here. The put-in is going to go with Nola Flynn in the yellow jersey, uh, Doylestown. Flynn gets the ball nice and easy right there, although her counterpart nine, uh, Brantley, was right there with her. Oh, man, a little bit of a hospital pass there, but well fielded uh, in the air. Nola Flynn on the back again. Big run here, right? There we go. That's the number eight, Bridget McGonigal. You'll hear that name a lot. Reagan King running the dummy runner there. Big long ball out there going out to their 10. Sienna Cardi. Dawestown on the front foot big here. Caterpillar Ruck right there. Flynn off the back of that, dishes out to the far side. We'll get you a number there in a second. Try is awarded. Here's the replay. Great run there, great chase as well. Just, uh, just not enough at the end there. So Doylestown opens up the scoring action in the first three minutes of the game. Uh, we'll try to get a name on that jersey. Uh, I suspect it was either Perillo or La Caruba. Nola Flynn with the kicking duties. Nice boot, does it have the mustard? Oh, just shy. Okay, so the kick no good, so it's Doylestown five, Cobra zero, uh, in about the first five minutes of the first half here, down at uh, beautiful Guilford College in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, day two of the Rugby Showcase South, and um, being hosted here by our, our, our good friend, uh, Christine Newcomb, head coach for the women's program at this campus. Hell of a game, kid. Clotter. Nice game. It's Clotter, by the way. It's Clotter. Clotter. Just got corrected. We've been calling this young lady Clotter. It's Clotter. My daughter We're going to fix that moving forward for her. Doors down on the front foot here. Dinging the ball out there is the three. Lily Fisk. Dolestown moving the ball well. Nola Flynn off the back. Ball's out the far side to the 12, Maggie Austin. Hell of a good player. Moving that far side ball well. Flynn on back there. Big run here, big charge in there by King.
Oh, big poach there from Cobras, and Cobras on the front foot, slicing run. Really nice work here from the black jersey. Oh, they're moving the ball well on the tight side. Wow, what a change, what a change in the action here. This is fantastic, folks. Ball moving really well for Cobras here. Ball, runners coming at pace, one after the other. Really nice work, good hard rucking. Oh, number 10 unfortunately loses the ball for, loses the ball off the shoulder, but they're able to cover number 11. Avery looking for that try line. She might have it, folks. Oh, she's brought down just north of there. Cobra's moving this ball well, working that ball wide, looking for that space. There's the number eight on the carry, Delaney. Number 14 now with the ball, Stoke. Oh, unfortunate, big poach here for Doylestown. Looking to work that ball back. Dawestown having a hard time getting it out of their 22. Big pressure here from Cobras. This is what we were waiting to see. We've got a game on our hands, folks. Okay, there's a whistle. Sir is going to bring it back to the mark. I suspect we have a knock. There it is. Wow, what a change in the action there, Chris, huh? Holy cow, that was exciting. I gotta remember, I'm not a spectator. <laughs> Man, boy, these young ruggers make it fun though, I'll tell you. Both competent teams uh, when it comes to scrummaging, so uh, this, this, this is an interesting one. This is gonna be a Doylestown put in. Uh, they're well within their 22, so I suspect we're gonna see that ball go back to Flynn. She's gonna look for that green space. Although uh, this Raleigh Cobras team is ready for Flynn's kick. If it does come, you've got uh, the number 15 Calhoun here and her counterpart uh, on the far side. They're covering that, uh, uh, that uh, what's gonna be probably a kick to take that pressure off. So they're gonna have to be ready for that ball coming back quick. As little grubber kick, making it tough to handle. Great idea from Flynn. Ball recovered from Avery. Oh, big counter rucking work, but not enough. Number four with the carry, Falcone. Off the back of that was the nine, Brantley. Cobra's on the front foot here. Big carry there. Nice work, still moving forward. Ball moving well here. Great ball from depth there, but handled well. Brantley looking for the options, goes to the far side. Looked like the five on the carry, Stevens. Got a whistle here, okay. Penalty was not releasing. Nola Flynn marshalling her team. This is the break that Doylestown needed because uh, Cobras were on fire. Gotta watch this young winger in the 11 jersey here, Avery. Do not give her any inkling of, a spa of space because she's gonna take it. King on a big carry. Flynn off the back, distributes well, balls out. Nice little show and go there from the number 10, Sienna Cardi. Woo, big work here. Oh, look at this, folks. What a great little break from the Cobras. And they dot it down for five to tie it up with the kick to come. Very happy parents over here on the sideline. Chris, if you got a number on the back of that jersey, help me out. I'm trying to see, but uh, try to get this young lady the credit she deserves. Fantastic work from Cobras. This is the game we were expecting, folks. A good back and forth punch out between these two quality sides. Really good stuff. I think it was a bit of a slow start for Cobras, but they've certainly found their feet.
Calhoun, same as yesterday with the kicking dude. He's very competent on that foot. See you next time. Just saying goodbye to uh, the other half of uh, our good friends, the Golsons, who are Austin. Safe travels, folks. Foregone conclusion that that ball was going over. Uh, Calhoun's got a great foot, so that's going to make it uh, Cobra's seven, uh, Doylestown five. Doylestown with the restart. Nola Flynn on the kicking duties. Cobra's feeling good, as they should. Flynn with a good high ball there. Lots of hang time, giving the opportunity for them to contest. The kids got all the tools. Back of the ruck right there. Good, great first receiver there from King. Making the hard yards. Flynn again, big runner here from... Uh, from McGonagall in the eight jersey. Carrying, carrying, carrying. Doylestown saying no way to that seven, they want it. Number 10, Sienna Cardi. Oh, oh, big tackle over there and the ball's bu busted out into the uh, touch line, into the touch. Getting a little tongue tied there. So great series of play on the front foot from Doylestown there. Uh, but, uh, you know, a after a, a good series of attacking uh, thwarted by the uh, Cobras. And, uh, you know, this is, this is some crazy action between these two teams. Line out far side. Ball's up. Great ball off the top there. Cobras, ooh, a little bit of an errant pass there, but it's well fielded. Cobras on the front foot looking for that space. Oh, unfortunately, a bit of jittery hands. It's gonna be recovered by Doylestown. Nine's in on that, so the duties are gonna to fall to King. King takes it off the back. She's looking for those hard yards and getting them. There's Flynn doing the work, protecting her buddy. Okay, looks like we're gonna take it back to a knock and it's gonna go Doylestown's, uh, in Doylestown's favor. King making those hard yards. She's coming in with a full head of steam. Her and Nola Flynn working well together. Uh, just re really championship stuff out here. Number seven looked like. Doesn't look like we have that jersey right, so we'll just have to hold that name for the moment. unless that was a three that I was mistaken for and that was Fisk. Cobra's doing a nice job taking the ball from the head here. Ball's moving through Cobra hands on the far side. Brought down just north of the 22. Cobra's looking for their options. Nice little work here, good hands. Nice little offload here and slicing run up the middle right here. That's for the number seven Raleigh Cobras, that's uh, Sandberg. 16 and nine getting a little mixed up there, but they're able to get the ball off. Calhoun dishes it off to her counterpart right there. This young lady's making hard yards. Looks like the 15, if I'm not mistaken. And that would be, pardon me, um, 13 My Myers. Okay. So Doylestown's able to uh, stop that uh, attacking black jersey right now. Rook looking real sharp coming out of the Cobra's uh, side of the field. And Doylestown gets that break that they want. Penalty far side of the field. Sir is calling the mark. Nola Flynn with, will she go for touch? She does. Great foot, finds touch.
Thank you, Clayton, for the updated roster, making uh, our lives easy here. Very good. Hey, uh, shout out to everybody at home. If we're not pronouncing names right, please let us know. Uh, we want to make sure that we, uh, uh, we, we, we get it right out here for these young ruggers. For example, we've been calling uh, Mia Cloder Clotter uh, for the last two years, and she just informed us that it was Cloder, and that that's an important thing. Let's get Hart just stops by the booth, uh, one of the guys that makes uh, all this magic happen. Ball moving well here. 12 on the carry, Maggie Austin. Maggie Austin finding those soft shoulders. She's making hay, folks. She's behind her. Real nice work here. Flynn marshalling the field. Spreading that offensive line out. Digs it out. Out to the, through the hands of the 10. Sienna Cardi. There, folks. Sir calls the mark. Quick tap and go from Nola Flynn. She's looking for that help. Nice work there from Reagan King. Believe it was a, a score. I think Reagan King off that penalty from Nola Flynn right there charges it into that far side. Uh, so that puts five on the board for uh, Doylestown. Really nice, nice series of play from Doylestown there. Uh, really putting the Cobras on the back foot. And this is the interesting thing, like the momentum in this game shifts uh, on, a, on a dime. It, it's really fantastic. It is so, it, it's so quick from both sides. Flynn's got a pretty, uh, pretty challenging kick here, but if anybody's up to it, it's this young lady. Once again, really nice work out of that green and yellow jersey on that one. Heads up play off of that penalty. The momentum was there. Nice strike from Flynn. Oh, unfortunately, just short. So the score is Doylestown 10, Cobras 7. Chris, I suspect we'd be getting close to the half, even with the uh, injury time, but. Uh... Ball's up. A little bit of a flicker there. Not an easy one, but Nola's able to gra grab a hold of it nice and easy. Nola getting mugged over there. Nice two on the tackle. Oh my. Yellow card. I suspect if we go back, take a look at that, that might, that might have been uh, just above uh, the safety zone right on the shoulders. So unfortunately for uh, Cobras, they're gonna play rugger down. Uh, I suspect if we're playing 20 minute halves, it's gonna be five minutes versus the 10 for a full game. But uh, there's no guff taken when it comes to the high tackles. It's a whole, it's a, it's a big safety thing, and it's, it's good that they're watching. McGonagall, big carry. Big, big carry, taking players with her. Great uh, counter caterpillar support there on that ruck. Oh, unlucky. Cobras are gonna punish you for that stuff. Knox called. Good game on our hands here. Three point game, folks. Brantley getting ready for the put in. Ball off the back there. Goes out to their 13. Harry's in this game today, folks. Oh, big turnover there for Doylestown. Nope, it's going back Cobra's way this time.
Big rucking support there. Nice work from Cobras. Oh, unfortunate jittery hands there from the eight. Delaney, but Calhoun's on it. Looks like Calhoun's going to peel both. That ball's going to be well handled from the 10. Uh, Brantley off the back. Going to get it wide. Here we are looking for some space. Runner putting the, uh, putting the wheels on. Good support. And seven. In the run there, Sandberg. Really nice work. Really nice work, ladies. Oh, unfortunate. Okay, folks, I just heard from Chris as I was uh, celebrating this, uh, what looked like a fantastic, which it was a fantastic effort. Unfortunately, the ball was knocked on in the try zone, so that's going to re result. Oh, I'm hearing that uh, Reagan King slapped it out <laughs> on top of it. Uh, that's that's heads up defensive play, right? It's like, uh, you know, it, it just don't don't quit. It's never over. Sorry for the Cobras. That was a really well worked ball, but nice work by Reagan King. And it looks like we're so at the Doylestown ten Cobras with almost a five there, but uh, at seven uh, and. Uh, at shaped up uh, really well. Cobras with a little bit of a first three to four minutes and now really giving Doylestown a good game here. So we're, we're seeing some really quality rugby out here, folks. And best isn't just our name, it's our benchmark. Morris Rugby provides significant resources and support as a founding partner Last but not least, Base Camp 31, providing administrative and event support in support of its. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I just got given a lovely gift of a uh, St. Patrick's Day bow tie. I will. He's clan. That's right. That's right. You never know who's watching. <laughs> with us uh, from Wando Wahini's. Had a great night with uh, them and team uh, over at uh, the hotel. It's great to see you guys as always and uh, looking forward to seeing you again soon. Safe travels. Great group down there in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Had a chance to link before the holidays. We went down for an ID camp for the uh, EGRL selects and had a chance to hang out. <laughs> so Cloder has also informed us that she's a freshman this in eighth grade last year, um, <laughs> which is really. How you guys doing? doing all right. How are you? Can't complain. That was a... That was a hell of a show in here, Raleigh Cobras score, Doylestown 10, Raleigh Cobras 7. Uh, as anticipated would happen, this is a really good punch out between these two teams. Uh, some hard hitting rugby, good ball movement on the twos. That's you know indicative of the scores uh, being lower um, at this point. Uh, 10 
defensive side of the ball from both sides. Raleigh Cobras will love as we've come to uh, expect. Out on an opportunity, what was a well worked try effort that was towards the number eight Delaney going in for the try zone, but uh, up to that point was a really well worked with support in the form of Avery and uh, the number seven Sandberg. So it was well worked and unfortunate at the end there. Good high deep ball right there, finds a little bit of green space, well fielded. In the Hello, Jersey, right there. We'll get you a number on that in a second. Reagan King fending off one, two. Current ball. Oh, big steal here from the number three, uh, Matthews. Or 24, which may have been Cox. Sorry, the action's moving so quick here, folks. Ball really worked uh, well worked by Brantley off the back. Hard work coming out of that. Oh, no, she doesn't. I'm sorry. Oh, there it is. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm watching the replay. I'm getting so excited. Jeez. Sorry, folks. Nice work from Avery there. She's uh, trying to keep my excitement to a dull roar here so I can call this bloody game. Well, I guess it could be worse. I mean, they should. So that brings the score, uh, Raleigh Cobras 12, Doylestown 10. Oh, Bree's causing a little bit of grief here. That's a real pain in the rear for these kickers. It's a nice strike. Is if you're looking for a hooker, you don't have. Uh, pardon me, a kicker. Uh, you don't have to look much further than that 15 jersey in Calhoun. Good ball with lots of hang time, able to be McGonigal there for the tackle. Three on the carry, Matthews. Matthews puts it through the hand. Oh, big runner here, number 13 again. Myers. The ball off the back of that ruck to uh, number three again. Attempting a counter ruck here, a little kick. Ball's tied up. It's gonna go Cobra's way. Big carry here from Matthews again. Matthews making hard yards in this second half. Pretty good here. Nice little run, good head of steam there. for the offload, she can't find it, takes it into contact. Brantley works the ball out to the far side. Number four there on the carry. Uh, too serious. Uh, we're gonna give the uh, camera and the uh, AV a break for the moment, uh, we'll be back shortly. comes to the breakdown, and you just saw it in action there, You're looking at the game. A couple of words with the... Uh, uh, they're bringing forward a player. It looks like they're going to have a chat, potentially, about high... A good vantage point on the, uh, the line out here. Able to wrap things up and get ahead of it on the road. Nice take from Cobras there. Line out. Little show and go right there. Nice little work. Oh, big run. Oh, looking for the offload. Unfortunately, the support isn't there. 
Where's that ball gonna turn up? Diving over. To King, King looking for that space and she's finding it. Avery's not letting her go easy though. There and unfortunately McGonagall drops. There's the whistle. Cobra's put in. Brantley gets good clean ball off the back of the team, but the 13's able to come up with the ball, and that is Myers in there. It's going to stay with Cobras. And here from the five, Stevens. For Falcone. Big work from Doylestown to take that front foot momentum out of the uh, Cobra's attack. Flynn looks for the green space. Boy and boy. She's able to break through Nola's tackle attempt. Avery's on the run, folks. This is off to huge effort from Avery. Unbelievable try. That's two for Avery, folks. Man, Chris, we've been the whole time. The momentum shift in this game is crazy. Crazy. Wow. It's just, if the two teams battling it out here, and then there's just a... Avery, fantastic running. I mean, outside step, inside step, wheels are on. I just... Calhoun with the kicking duties. I gotta tell you folks, with rugby like this, there's nothing I'd rather. The wind's really picking up here, making it. Folks, that's gonna make it uh, 20, a score like that's gonna chin up this team over here in the yellow jersey, and we're gonna see some action. Apologies for the background noise, that uh, breeze is picking up pretty good. Flynn, good high ball, giving... Sandberg. Looks like we got ourselves, not sure what we have going on here. Oh, we got another yellow there, and it looks... Trying to get you a number on who's going on. Number six. Thanks, Chris. Number six is uh, from Doylestown. Uh, Kayla Robinson being sent off. Um, so warnings are out the window now, folks. They're going right to the uh, right to the card, and that's fair. For Doylestown, you don't want to have to play man down against this Cobra. So. Brantley there. Oh, ball there, and unfortunately it's lost. The advantage arm is out. There's the whistle calling the knock. I think that's two yellows in this game. Is that right, Chris? Am I, am I as well, so Doylestown's kind of been playing uh, rugger down most of this game. So 15, and it, you know you're playing against a competent side like this black jersey on the other side of the ball. It's that's not an easy your defense. Like so, good work, good work to Doylestown. A high tackle, but normally uh, intentional. 
Doylestown benefits from the... Uh, That was a quick tap and go from uh, this young lady in the orange cleats. Going to try to get a number on the back of this jersey, finally. You hear her name a fair amount. Uh, she's a competent uh, young... Doylestown, that's uh, uh, La Caruba and uh, 19. Um, unfortunately, we're not uh, showing... Okay, penalty turnover is going in favor of our uh, uh, jersey on the other side here, Raleigh Cobras. Just felt a bit of a raindrop. <clears throat> Support and get a tent out here. My man Chris is on it. He's got... Uh, Chris and Kieran over there uh, heading over to our uh, handy trailer. Equipment. Nineteen. I believe actually nineteen is uh, Bianca from uh, the more. Is he getting some field time out there? Player to the squad. Number five there with the ball distribution off the back of that was uh, Stevens. 13 again, Myers. Big carry here from the five, Stevens. Another big carry here from the black jersey. Well stopped by Doylestown. It looks like Doylestown may get that ball. No, Brantley's there, fishes it out. Nice work. Penalties called. Diving over. Tough one for Doylestown here in the field position against this attacking Cobra side. Delaney on the carry there from Doylestown, but Brantley's able to hang on to that ball, get good ball distribution. Cobra's on the front foot. Brantley working at the far side, big carry here. This young lady's going for it. Looked like... Not rolling away is the penalty call. Looks like Crowley may be calling for points. They are. So, this is uh, this is a good decision from Cobras, right? They uh, they're going to take the points and get the ball back. So, we were talking about decision making on the field and how uh, the players are responsible for the flow of the game. Uh, when it comes to game time, it's uh, during the week. It's up to the coaches, right, to coach and teach the fundamentals and drive the plays and all that stuff. But when it comes to uh, uh, game day, those decisions are being made on the field. And here is a, a classic example of uh, sound decision making by a good squad out here, right? Take these points, get the three, make it 24-10, making a two try distance between having to make it up and then you get the ball back as well. So basically, uh, basically securing the game. Kick is good. That's going to finish it up, folks. 24-10 going to rally Cobras against Doylestown. Doylestown putting out a phenomenal effort out there. A couple of yellow cards bringing them down to 14 in both halves. Uh, but that's okay. Um, it's, they, they've really played a hard game out here today. Came down with light numbers as well. Uh, and a young side, and they're showing some... Uh, some good stuff. And pardon me, we're not calling the game quite yet. We are moving to the center of the field. There will be a restart. And thank you to the folks who just put the tent up. Good stuff. Keep the equipment dry. Folks, just checking the time. I suspect we're getting close, and I thought that celebration from uh, 
from Raleigh was the end of it, but they were just uh, hip hip hooraying for uh, Calhoun, who put the three points up. Looks like we're going to be scrumming down uh, right on the 22. <clears throat> Nola Flynn ball in hand. Doylestown put in. So it looks like time was off during that injury time because I'm showing 22 minutes on the clock. So uh, we're going to be playing through right there. Oh, tough little take there. Knock again against Cobras, so it's going to be scrummed down pretty much the same field position. It looks like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Fisk in the three jersey has moved to the eight roll. So McGonagall's off the field. Fisk, a competent pack player. It is. Confirmed that we have Bianca on the wing here. Sienna you know, Cardi working off the back of that. I guess uh, Nola Flynn had moved to flanker on that uh, in that role. Flynn back with the nine duties. Safe ball with King. Oh, look at that poach. Man, those efforts are fantastic. These Southern teams are just so on the game when it comes to the Jackal poach. Oh my goodness. Okay, penalty mark is being called back. It's a good position for a kick here, but uh, Nola's gonna opt to make it the big carry with Fisk here, and Fisk is making yards, and that's a good decision, right? You're down 14 points at this point. You gotta go for the try. Ball's being worked out far side. Oh, unlucky, little bit of an errant pass there at the, at the knees. Uh, she's working hard for it. That was number 13, Sydney Haddon. <laughs> Folks, that's the game. Uh, well, you know, listen, hats off to Cobras. They really put on a terrific show out there today in Doylestown. Uh, uh, it really worked hard out there. They had some, uh, some issues with some yellow cards, one in the first and one in the, sec uh, one in the first half, one in the second half. So playing rugger down is a, is a difficult thing to do, and in particular when you're playing a competent side like, uh, like these Raleigh Cobras here. Hats off to both sides. Some really exciting rugby in both halves of this game. Actually, Cobras had kind of a quiet start. Uh, but then turned it on about three to four minutes in and gave us what turned out to be a really exciting game to watch. Momentum shifts were fantastic. They were quick. Ball was going one direction. All of a sudden, it was a turn. There was a try. I mean, just exciting stuff to watch. And uh, re really, enjoy I have to say for myself, for Chris, certainly enjoyable, hopefully for you at home as well. So we're going to take a brief pause here. Uh, captains for the next game are coming up. We're going to get our rosters together, and we'll be right back uh, with live action game three. Talk to you soon.
Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, we're going to have game three coming up for you here very quickly. Uh, we're going to have uh, Clayton, North Carolina versus uh, Morris Rugby, New Jersey uh, coming at you uh, in about, uh, about two seconds. So just getting our rosters together here. Thank you to uh, the Clayton staff for getting us a, uh, an updated roster here. with names and corresponding numbers. That should make uh, things a lot easier as well. Both teams taking the field here. Gonna hit the go button on the timer. Clayton with the restart, uh, Clayton with the kickoff. Good deep ball kick here. Finds a little bit of green space. That's fielded well by Olive Rhodes. Rhodes is two on the tackle there, but she's still on her feet. Really hard charging there. Nice work. Oh, big poach here from Clayton from the number 13, Olivia Spremberg. We saw a lot of her yesterday doing the hard work. And there she is again. Spremberg off the back of that ruck. Oh, puts out a rib breaker right there. It's pulled out of the air. Wow, Clayton moving the ball well here. That was the number one who's Hendershot who's able to hold on to uh, a pretty hard pass coming at her. Wow, Clayton really on the front foot here, almost playing ahead of the ball. Ball's turned over, Cirillo off the back of that ruck. Black jersey's got it. Cirillo again, ball out to Maroney. Maroney looking for that space. Hard charging runner, gets that dish off to O'Brien. O'Brien brought down hard but holds on to the ball as expected. Okay. Penalty call, I'm sorry folks, I didn't catch the arm there. Holding on, not releasing. Little tap and go here from Clayton. Big carry here from the eight. Santiago, forward momentum's all with Clayton at the moment. Black jersey marshalling that defense. Nice work from Wise. Number 10 there with the ball distribution, Dickens. Clayton looking pretty threatening here, folks. They've got the numbers out wide, too. There goes Dickens again. She's looking for the space. Tackled just north of the try line right there. It, it, it appears it was held up. A am I correct, Chris? Yeah, it is, okay. Yeah, so nice work uh, on the defensive side of the ball there for Morris to have that heads up play of holding the ball up. That means that the attacking player was going into the try zone, was not able to touch it down and show the authority necessary to, to get the five points. Little kick here from uh, Cirillo, finds some green space and gets this uh, the sympathetic bounce. Oh, well fielded here by uh, Emily Van Doren. Ruck support in there from Maroney. Big run here from Mackenzie Marks. Brought down, bit, brought down hard just north of the 50. The ball's lost forward. And it's going back Clayton's way. I think we have a whistle here, folks. So already some, uh, some great tempo in this game here. Great front foot for that blue jersey. And good defensive work from uh, the black jersey. Kicking for touch there is the nine, uh, Sierra Santiago. Once again, I want to thank the Clayton staff for getting us this uh, roster. This was super helpful. Santiago finds a good spot for touch there. This is a great attacking platform for this team. Let's see if they're going to maul it here. This Clayton team, super competent. Lifters brought down. Ball's up. Oh, well, well handled right there from the seven. That looked like uh, Vinton. Nice little ball out there to Dickens. 
Then out to the 12, Regan Van Gran. Regan Van Gran, pardon me. Dickens again. Oh, nice little switch right there. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, Clayton's gonna put it down and that's the 15 with the hard work right there, Washington. That ball really moves well off the back of that ruck through the hands of Dick, uh, Dickens and now to Washington. Washington's able to round that corner and put it down for five. Sorry, folks, for the, uh, the dead air there. I was just making sure I was getting the scores down right. And then we've got uh, kicking duties here from, let's get a number there for you. Like Brian was saying, it's interesting to see um, the different styles uh, the kickers use to prepare for this. Oh, it's no good across the front. The mustard was on the ball. There was enough heat there, but uh, unfortunately does not make the target. So it'll be uh, Clayton 5, Morris 0 in the opening minutes of uh, um, the third match of uh, this morning's schedule. Morris on the restart. Stepping on this cord. Cirillo puts the ball up. Oh, get it, get it, get it. tough uh, tough work there for uh, for Hayes, number three. So that will result in a knock on, as you can see at home, and then uh, we're going to get the scrum down, and Morris will get the put in. Cirillo signals, balls in. Nice little push here from Clayton, but uh, oh, there's the eight man steak from Kayla Ronsky. It's bred pretty well. She puts the ball out to Cirillo. Ball moving well through the hands of Morris out there. See Fiona Cusack looking to round that corner. Brought down far side. Morris on the attack. Mackenzie Marks with a big carry, but she's met by the number four, Williford. Oh, great hands by uh, Nora Landerman to hold on to that one, bobbling it through and still at pace. Rhodes opts to dish it off to Maroney. Maroney looks outside to Aaron O'Brien. Van Dorn looking for that, uh, that space out there but can't find it under Walker. Maria Wise looking for the carry. Brought down, brought down by the one Hendershot. Bit of a melee here. Good ball here. Sienna Miller looking for the carry, taking players with her. Look at that poach work, folks. And it's awarded. It's awarded. Want to jump on? Got Reagan King here coming off of uh, her recent game. Uh, we, we've got a hot mic if you want it. I think I'm gonna get some help commentating here today, which is nice. All right, you're live. Hi, everyone. How's it going? It's going. Yeah. Pretty good, yeah. Definitely beat up after uh, three really tough opponents this weekend. Absolutely, that was, uh, that was a tough one against the Cobras. That was a back and forth. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think uh, the yellow cards weren't, uh, weren't helping. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so I we. Think, I think just like overall, like both of uh, both my team and the Cobras, like just put up a really physical game. Really, it's just like a strong fight, and it made it really hard to, like, kind of get anything done on either side, just because like both defenses were really strong and like not letting, like, you know, just like the attack. I mean, the attacking defense were both strong on both sides, so 
um, definitely a tough game. Yeah, we were saying the same thing. It was it was really played within the 22s, and the scoring options just came out of a little bit of broken rugby. It was like because pressure D on both sides was keeping that ball firmly in the 22s. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it looks like what was time off for an injury there. Newcomb was down in the two jersey, but she's back and legging it back to her team. So good for her. And we're going to bring you back to the action here. Again, if you're just joining us, you're looking at uh, Clayton, North Carolina versus Morris from New Jersey. Clayton ahead with one try, a really nice work try by the team. Uh, Clayton and finished off by Washington. Yeah, not to be mistaken by uh, Clayton, Delaware, where I'm from. So. Clay <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be a Clayton put in. The nine duties are being done by Santiago today. Easy peasy ball right there for Santiago. Santiago opts for a little sneak right there, and she's able to get the ball off, but it looks like Corfin took that. Was it right place, right time. Yeah. So penalty and quick uh, quick tap here from the number four jersey. That is Williford. Like maybe number eight. Was it eight? I think it might have been eight. Eight. That would be Melvin then. It's good to have young eyes here. <laughs> <laughs> Got a big carry happening here down the line, folks. And it looked like this is being really well worked by uh, the blue jersey. Ops to pick and go out of the back and dots it down. Let's get, see if we can get a jersey number there. Try to get this young lady the credit. It was a black scrum cap. When we see her turn her back to us, let's see if we can grab a number. I'll look with my young eyes. See there you go. <laughs> that would be helpful. Got to do something about standing on this cord here. Maybe that'll do it. Looks to be number five. Okay, number five, that would be, oddly enough, Reagan Clark. Oh. Nice Another work, young Reagan lady. Reagan from Clayton. <laughs> so that's 10-0 uh, to Clayton uh, versus Morris kicking uh, kick to come. Unfortunately, kick is no good. Let's see if we can get a number on that jersey as well, running back. We're hoping to, she'll turn our way so we can tell you who was on the kicking duties. 13? 13, perhaps? Yes, one, seven, 10, 12, 13, or 15. That's my guess. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll have to get back to you on that jersey right there because uh, we're resuming live action here. So, uh, okay, it looks like a knock call far side. Let's see. Number 10? Okay, that's uh, number 10 on the kicking duties was uh, Jeannie Dickens. She certainly got the, got the strength kicking it forward, just the target was off slightly. Little eight man sneak from uh, Kayla Ronsky. Dishes it off to her nine, Cirillo. Big carry here from Marks, nice work. Supports there with Sienna Miller. Keeping that ball, Morris. Wise with the carry. And I will say, Mackenzie Marks, shout out to her because every run that I see from her is just pounding into the line. There's very few people that can stop her. Um, in less than a meter space. I'm with you. Yeah, you, you, you guys play a very similar game. And we were commenting on that while in, uh, when uh, you, we were playing earlier. Little tap and go here. Looks like a carry from Hendershot, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the one. 
Okay, not releasing. Going to go in favor of Morris. Cirillo bringing it back to the mark. Little tap there. Cirillo's on the attack. She's looking for that help. Oh, almost. Great idea. Unfortunately, execution didn't follow. Unlucky. Unlucky. Yeah, just a little bobble off the hands. That would have been a... She would have right through that line. She has so much momentum behind her. Absolutely. Yeah, that was so close for them. You know, we were saying it's... Um, one of the things, too, if you're playing the earlier games today, in, in particular the first game, it was a tough ball because there was so much dew on the field that that thing was so bloody slick. Yeah, I'd say for the first half of our game, we kind of, we could definitely feel it. Still? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Towards the end of the game, it got a little bit better, but uh, definitely, and I'm during warm-ups, too, every time I picked the ball up, it was just <laughs> yeah. very yeah. slick. Yeah, we're not benefiting from yesterday's sun today, that's for sure. <laughs> ball moving well on the far side. It was a knock and it's gonna go in favor of Morris. So Clayton was looking to put, try to put something together there, but unfortunately wasn't able to. And uh, this is gonna result in a uh, scrum down to Morris. Zerillo signals balls in. Oh, that's not what you wanna see, that kind of crumble. I think space might have been off a little bit, and then just on the engage, you're not hitting just right, and it's uh, that's crumpling the uh, front row. That space looks a little bit better. You almost have to get uncomfortably close to one another so you can make that engage correctly. <laughs> Man, again, that's not good. Yeah, this this can get a little dangerous for those. Uh, front row forwards. So penalties called. Um, it's going to go against Morris, so it looks like Morris is going to need to look at uh, what's happening in the front row there. A little tap and go here. Morris putting some good pressure on here. Not making it easy. Okay, Come we got a runner inside. here. Yeah. Oh, looks like it'll be called for obstruction. Obstruction, yeah. Oh, a little quick tap right there from Cirillo. Great idea. Maroney on the carry. Cirillo digging it out. She's moving the ball wide. I think that was uh, O'Brien on the carry into contact. Or maybe, uh, pardon me, it looked like Barati uh, came up on uh, the number two off the back of that. Nice work. Maroney getting brought down. Oh, ball's lost. Ball. Got to be careful with this Clayton team. They're going to take advantage of those mistakes. 12 in on the scrummy roll there, and that would have been uh, Van Gran. And she caught her own ball. Oh, my God. Oh, just to be ripped away by number 15. 15, that's uh, Cusack. And uh, number 23 for Morris was, who's in the 20? Twyla Lant. Kenzie on the carry here. I will say that was a little bit unlucky losing the ball there, but she kicked that ball so high up in the air that she was able to catch it herself. <laughs> That's amazing. If that one Morris player was not there, she would have been gone. I <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry I missed it. I was looking down for a name, but I'll have to go back and watch the replay. I think that was the same, uh, same one in the black scrum cap that scored. Okay, we're looking at her right here. She's got the... Uh, Pigtails coming out of the side. Let's get a, can we get a jersey number on her? She's a, that's a dynamic little player right there. Just turn a little bit. Yeah, right. Just Isn't that frustrating? Bit. All right, well, she's playing second row, so it's going to be four or five. So I'm thinking it's Clark. That would make sense if she, because she was the one that scored the try over here. Correct, so. correct. Okay, so we got her. Ball is recovered by Morris. Into seven, Nora Landerman. Landerman takes it into contact. Looks like Sosi Herning doing the uh, rucking duties there. The Taking their time here. Clayton's definitely challenging that ruck. Absolutely. 
Mackenzie Marks looking for that forward momentum, gets a little bit. Ruck sealed off by Barati. Rhodes on the carry, tough runner here. Look at her keeping her feet. Backs it up, pushes off. Man, she is making hard yards. Brought down, safely puts the ball back, redistributed by uh, Cirillo. Well fielded there by Landerman, it looked like. Oh, yeah, unfortunately, okay. That's too bad. That was a nice series yeah. of play from the black jersey, right? Yeah, a little bit of uh, just unpredictable ball there. Looks like it bobbled around a couple times, and uh, Clayton ended up on the on the winning side, side of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Morris putting together some good uh, front foot action, though. Clayton opting to kick to touch. That's a hell of a boot there. Yeah. So. Take it easy. Good to see you, brother. It's Ryan Melody heading back to Maryland with his uh, Marauders. Great to see you. Here comes his daughter, Carolyn, playing in the eight jersey today. Ball's up. Sure didn't like something there. We're having a quick chat. Or Clayton didn't like something there. Okay, so Emily Newcomb is uh, in the two jersey with the uh, throw in. Okay, line out seems to be a little out of sorts. Sir's just calling it back here. We're gonna start again. Looks like we have a couple people from the Mid-Atlantic heading back. That was a couple Downingtown players just, yeah, just walked away. Crowd's getting a little thinner, right? Eh? Yep. Okay, knock forward there. Um, so that line out will now become a scrum down, and it looks like it's going to be Clayton's ball. Uh, and, and that'll be the half. So let's a uh, uh, quick rundown of what we got. So Clayton ahead of Morris, uh, 10 to 0 at the half. Both teams, I think, putting out. Uh, a pretty exciting effort. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, defensively, once again, another game being played within the 22s, and uh, there's good pressure D, but boy, you get these flashes on that front foot that are really exciting to watch from both sides. Yeah, and I think, personally, at least for me, the, the best part about this weekend is just, like, playing, like, teams that we've never played before. I mean, like, Morris coming down playing Clayton. We played um, the Atlanta Valkyries, yeah. uh, Charlotte Cardinals, and um, uh, obviously the Raleigh, Red, or Raleigh Cobras. So um, just like seeing a different game that we've never seen before and seeing new players and um, seeing players that we've normally played against I, or normally played with. I've, I mean, um, Cookie, I've never played against Cookie before this okay. weekend. I hope it never happens again. <laughs> That's <laughs> and great. And I had that conversation. I'm like, you know, love playing against you, but I hope to, <laughs> hope to never do it again. <laughs> yeah. That, that is really funny. Yeah, I, you guys playing selects together and everything, and uh, yeah, it's funny when you got to face each other in opposite jerseys, then, right? Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely weird looking at each other across the field <laughs> instead of next to each other. You so. get that knowing nod, and it's like, I know this is going to be a hard 40 minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> but Alexa Kirshner too. I, you know, there was a couple times where I like ran right up against her. <laughs> you know, Another quality player too. And, yeah. Ran her over one time. I said that was the highlight of my career. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I mean, just seeing, like, across the board, seeing different teams is, um, I think, one very beneficial to kind of get new, um, like, see new faces and see different team styles. And, yeah. Um, rather than, you know, like, Doylestown could play Morris every weekend for a whole off season, but um, kind of different when you're playing different different teams you kind of learn to adapt in a different way uh, yeah i agree and i you know the, the 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 broader you get with it i think the game improves in its in, in its totality right and one of the things that we talk about as a coaching staff all the time is we did not realize how good the jackal was being executed you know south of the mason dixon line you know what i mean you, you come against these teams like clayton uh, Red Hawk, uh, you know, Charlotte, uh, Wando, like they, the Jackal's on for them all the oh, time. Absolutely. And it's, it's changed the way that, 
you know, our staff coaches coaches the game. Like, we knew we had to get better at it because if you don't counteract it, you're going to be in deep trouble. Yeah, if your number two is not there, like, they're taking it every second. It's very similar to um, um, when I played in Ireland. Like, a lot of the teams over there, like, and partially just because they've played since they could hold a rugby ball in their hands. But, um, sure. <laughs> but um, just, like, if you are not there the second you're – teammate goes down like you might as well just like hand them the ball like, yeah <laughs> absolutely and, and that was a, a like a real eye-opener for us coming down to play the southern teams is like wow they are th this is a really competent piece of their game and it's like they're taking away that attacking opportunity mm -hmm. you know at will uh, when we first ran into it yeah you know yeah yeah and it um it turns the ball over obviously like a lot more than just if just applying line speed or waiting for them to make a mistake. So um, forcing, like forcing the ball, oh, like they're not saying, oh, we'll wait for you to give us the ball. No, like they're saying like, we're going to take the ball from you. Yeah. You know, we're not going to. Yeah, we're going to take advantage of you not getting it, of, uh, of you being lazy, right? Yeah. It's like <laughs> not being quick enough. So uh, changing gears a little bit, uh, where are you heading in the fall or very shortly? Um, I'm headed to West Point. Well done, well done. When uh, when do you show up for Beast? So I um, report for our day, which is reception day. It's the first day um, on July 1st. July 1st, yep. right so around I, the corner. I graduate from my high school on June 1st, and then I have exactly a month until I report. So, okay. I'm really excited to play for Coach Bill. I've known him since 2018. Um, and then Kelsey McDowell, I've played with her, uh, played for her um, two times for Eero the past uh, two summers in Ireland. So I'm um, excited to just so like the players um Sophia Linder uh, uh Emma Gamboa both Morris alums yep. so um I've known like I know oh, Avery um from Connecticut so I've played with several of the girls on the team you've got across, some friends already yeah, yeah across all of the age levels so and um made some new faces and you're going to a great program and Happy to have you as well. We've known Bill a long time. He's a great supporter of the EGRL and us of uh, Women's Army Rugby. And uh, Kelsey, we had the chance to Tampa for the first time. And uh, I, she is a welcome addition to that staff, I am sure. And, um, you know, we had a real nice chat with her for a couple of hours in the airport. And it was great to meet her. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, uh, I remember going down the first day of the um, 2023 era tour. One, but I'm gonna be the coach. There. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and then of course, um, me not telling anyone. Uh, but still, by the end of the camp, everyone, <laughs> everyone, everyone knew. knew. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we had a kickoff from Morris. The ball did not go ten, so it'll be. Um, looks like it's gonna be a scrum back at the fifty. Yeah, nice heads up work from Van Doren there in the twenty-five jersey, right? She read it well. She's like, I'm not touching that, making it live. Let's get that clock going too so we can. We'll be a few seconds behind here, but not too bad. Looks like the ball is going to be won by Clayton. Yeah, nice. Uh, Ten doing a lot of work out there today uh, in the Clayton jersey, Dickens. Little kick, and that's received by maybe number 12? Uh, yeah, that's Rhodes, uh, who's been able to take control of it. Uh, I, I mean, amazing young player here. Uh, it looks like uh, may have been uh, uh, not sure what that penalty call was, but we are going to get the kick coming in from the side. Okay, that's not something we've seen a lot of uh, this past uh, this past weekend, but there it is, and it's going to result in a kick to touch for Cirillo, who's going to easily find touch and set the line up, up just in the Clayton 50. Okay, we do have one more game after this, the uh, Land of Valkyries versus Motley, but, uh, yeah, looks you know, like we're... Morris, uh, Morris caught that, took it down for a mall, and they are definitely winning this mall. Yeah, they've got some serious momentum there. Coach Bill Dobbs must be 
grinning from ear to ear for this one. I think that's one. going on 10 meters, if not more. That looks like Sosie Herning picking it up off the hard yards. I'm going to jump to the screen here and take a look. There's Cirillo fishing it out. Good caterpillar ruck there. Right into the hands of Rhodes. Rhodes making the hard yards, brought down. It is it's looking like a high tackle. Yes. It looks like it'll just be a warning for the time being, as we saw in the first game. But as as the players get tired, you'll start to see a little bit more high tackle happening. It's just, it's not, it's not being done maliciously. It's just, um, it just happens. And uh, you know, hopefully, uh, we won't see too much of it in this game. But it could result in the yellow. Yeah, it looks like that ball uh, by Morris was an attempt to kick to touch. Clayton got it back, but uh, I think Morris pushed them out of bounds, so it's still going to end up. Um, Morris ball. Morris ball. Abby Barati with the uh, throw in here. She's been really working hard on this skill set for, for herself and uh, it's starting to come together. O'Brien goes up. She's unable to get that ball, uh, but that's all right. It's gonna stay with Morris anyway. 22 carries the ball there and that is uh, DJ Corridan. Kenzie Marks having a quick word with uh, the referee. She's uh, uh, ticked off about something. We'll try to get her after the game and see what that was about. I think I understand her. Uh, <laughs> I can understand that feeling. <laughs> That was a good kick to touch right there, man. That's some, uh, that's, yeah. It's impressive. I'm in a good attacking platform here. Yeah, and especially after that successful mall, I have um, probably about 95% sure that they're going to attempt that again. I think, uh, I think I, it would be. After the success of that after one? After the success of their last one, I think it would be unwise to uh, try and take it out and leave it to their backs who uh, somehow always find a way to put us forwards in the, in the scrum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. O'Brien goes up. Oh, oh unfortunate. Oh. Just a little. Looks like it was tipped down, and uh, the Clayton, Clayton player got it. That was uh, number five again. And tougher and tougher today with that wind picking up. Because uh, when you put that number five jersey O'Brien up in the air, those are steady hands. You can see the smile on Cirillo's face from here. Big push from Clayton there, making it tough. Ronsky heads up play right there to grab the ball. They are, they are tough on that defensive side of the ball. Uh, in from the side, side right? Yeah. Oops, but Clay, uh, it's number five again, uh, Clark. She's definitely. Oh, what a little, what a great little chipper here, and that was 15. Washington who's able to recover the ball. And Clayton the moving the ball well, and we've got nine off to the races. Sierra Santiago, she's not going to have any problem dotting this down. Nice chase here from. Uh, uh, from uh, Fiona yeah. Cusack, but unfortunately a little too late. Great chase here also in the screen. Uh, you can see Goncalves trying to get a hold of her there, but uh, I think it was all for naught with Santiago. Yeah, and I think that was initially number 15, uh, Mercedes Washington that caught the ball. And yes. then number 13, Olivia Spremberg, Spremberg who um, just had the support immediately, and the three of them supporting each other, there was just a... Uh, there, were, there weren't enough Morris players to, um, yeah, to, to get there. Yeah, to stop that forward momentum. That was a great series of play for, uh, for Clayton, absolutely. And a heads up play too. So, and we said uh, Santiago put it down, correct? Yeah. Okay. Nice work from Santiago in the nine jersey to finish that one off. Real team try though. Yeah, I mean, no, uh, no doubt about it that if that support wasn't there, that tr like that try just would not have happened and um, even coming from the other side of the field uh, 
at that was it a scrum at the five or um, you know yeah just the heads up play from um, the communication across the field uh, for 15 to be looking for that ball was uh, just an impressive you, you make a great point too, right? Communication is such a critical part of this game, and it only comes with teams that have been playing together for a while, right? And and they they work at it as well. Like uh, you, you can't be silent out there. There's 30 bodies out there. You you have to be heard. You have to know where your support's going to be. And really nice work there. Yeah, yeah and, and um, one thing that we we talk about, um, especially at a higher level, is um, small small talk versus big talk, right? It was, um, like if I'm right next to someone and about to, you know, run a punch, like I want that to be small talk. I don't want necessarily every single person on the other team to know that, you know, maybe I'm gonna look for a tip pass or like maybe I'm gonna switch with someone. But um, at the same time, like there needs to be an equal balance of um, small talk and big talk to like be looking, hey, pull left, pull right. Um, I hear that. That's to work together in order to make. You're, you're absolutely right. You don't want to give, you, you don't want to tip your hand, right? And let's go back to that play right there from Melvin. That was a great ball taken by Melvin, the eight, yeah, made right that hard charging run, right? Right through the middle and uh, the kick, um, maybe that, not as far as the, uh, Clayton would have liked, but uh, turned that ball over to, um, to Morris. And DJ on the carry right there. So, you know, this is what we've been talking about. It's just back and forth all day, right? There's great forward momentum there, but it's thwarted by the black jersey. Look, it's back again. Like, yeah, Clayton picked that ball up from the uh, from the ruck, and um, Clayton's definitely they're not their first choice isn't to go down with it. That's for sure. They're trying to keep that ball alive in whatever way they can. Um, that was Hender's shot on the carry there, and you're absolutely right. They're really trying to keep their feet. Uh, and not releasing right there, so uh, that's a that's a good penalty for Morris taking the heat off. Yeah, yeah, and uh, nice close to the side that um, I think uh, Cirillo is. Um, He's got a great foot. Yeah, definitely. In oh. Looks like it may have been kept in. I could have sworn that looked like it was lost forward, but not. Okay, so. Lost forward, potentially lost forward by Clayton, but uh, Morris got it back either way, so. Yeah, gonna play um, that advantage arm. Oh no, that is, oh, who? Jumped on by both Clayton and Morris. Looks like Clayton is gonna get it. Um, that was real heads up play from Fiona Cusack there to get onto that ball and create a little bit of static, right? And, and not make it so easy. Washington on the carry. She's looking for support, but she's mugged over there too on the tackle. Looks like we may have jinxed, uh, <laughs> jinxed Cirillo on that. Just a little bit of an unlucky, uh, <laughs> yeah. little bit, a little bit lower than um, she probably would have liked. Because definitely looked like the, the line judge definitely put his flag up at first. So uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, interesting series of play. But you know, it's a, it's a super dynamic game. Some of that stuff will get lost from time to time, right? Yeah, but that kick by Cirillo is out into touch. So we will have line out right here. Line out. Let's see how far in we're in the second half here. About 10 minutes in, about halfway. Uh, and so far, like, really really nice second half play from both sides here. Yeah, I mean, Morris is definitely just not letting up. Um, Clayton has had incredible line speed and just, like, great heads-up plays to allow um, really strong, like, phases, even if they're not scoring off of it, to just, um, to just make, like, make meters, you know, yeah. gain meters. So, um, We'll see if uh, see how this momentum is helping them in the rest of the game. Boy, that that lineout's uh, given Morris some struggle today. Certainly, the wind's picking up. Wise was up for that to receive that, but ball seems to be going a little bit high for. Her. I think Clayton tried to get that ball back and unfortunately knocked it forward in the attempt. Uh, so it will be a scrum to Morris. Yeah, that wind's really picking up now. That's that's definitely not going to make it easy. But uh, yeah, it is getting a little bit chilly. It's not the. Uh, Nice North Carolinian weather. <laughs> By all means, get <laughs> you know, hit, hit the mute and grab a jacket if you want. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see when I start, start shivering. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like uh, Cirillo and Rhodes having a word, working th working some things out. Like to see that a little bit of chatter between players, like you're tall in the small talk and the big talk, and yeah, and that's definitely another key piece of information right the scrum half is um you know kind of partially the spokesperson of the um oh that scrum was won by clayton but uh 
scrum half, especially in set pieces, is definitely the I'd say the spoke per, spokesperson for the forwards. So sure. Have that communication, um, and either between the you know scrum half or the, the hooker would also be an like an important person to be sure. communicating. I'd say between the fly half, scrum half, and hooker are probably. Um, Santiago the moving that crazy ball right here, looking for yeah. those options. Oh, oh it looks so like she may have found there. it with uh, Melvin. Yeah, but um, yeah, like I said, there's uh, just very key communication that has to go on between the, uh, between those three people to uh, ensure that everyone's uh, cohesive between the backs and the forwards. Absolutely, Cardona in the 16 jersey doing some hard work out there as well. Ball moving reasonably well here for uh, Clayton, putting some pressure on. Uh, Morris may have dropped it or something like that, but Clayton definitely did not um, did not think twice about uh, jumping on that ball. Absolutely. Got them the ball back. Super heads up play from this uh, blue jersey. Number one is just driving forward. That's Hender shot in the one jersey. Santiago again out to uh, Melvin, it looked like, in the eight. And then that's number 20 doing some hard work there. Uh, it looked like uh, Jade Allison. Number five again looking for the carry, Regan, uh, Regan Clark. 18 off the back with Scrummy in, and that is uh, Bezik. Actually, I th it looks like, uh, uh, yeah, Santiago's moved out of that nine roll, and Bezik has moved in as she did yesterday. Yep, number three just had a really hard lineup, but it's going to be stopped by the ref. Or high tackle. High tackle. Um, interesting. No? What do you got? Not releasing. Not releasing. Not releasing. Okay. okay, that looked like was it was. Say, that's an interesting high tackle call on the offense. Yeah, but, uh... right. <laughs> did look like a high tackle it arm, did, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm going to sit here because the glare is less. He's turned away from us, though, so we can't quite see it. Uh, looks like a couple subs coming in. Okay, so that looks like Sosie Honing going, Her Herning going off, and uh, not sure who else came in. Twyla. And uh, Twyla Lant. Looks like uh, Kayla have gone off. Their ball to the 12 roads. Uh, that pass was read well by Clayton. Ball out to Wise. Ball out to 27. That is uh, Person Massey. Dragging a couple girls with her. Number three jersey, great player. Oh, unlucky right there. And there's the number five again, Clark making the headway. She's Melvin calling for the ball. This field. Out to the 12, Van Gran. And we have a large overload. Um, looks like Morris is working really hard to get back, um, take that overload away from Clayton. Yeah, they're scraping across. They're getting there in time. There goes Melvin on the carry. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, it, right there, uh, let's see it again. It's brought in. Uh, yeah, and, and that looked like the five, Clark, who brings it in again. So that's five points, making it 22 with the kick to come. That's two for Clark in the second half. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's all over the field. Even when she's not scoring, she's, um, you know, Taking, uh, you're, you're, taking lineups she, and she really is all over the field, man. She's, she's like playing like five different. <laughs> Something about those regions. <laughs> Something about them. Uh, I don't think I'm biased at all. Though. No, no, I, I wouldn't say that in what, at all. <laughs> Let's give a time check here. Also, uh, who do we have? We have 10 Dickens on the kicking duty, so it's dotted down in the near corner over here, so it's going to make the kick a little bit challenging. Uh, wind absolutely 16 minutes into the second half so this is looking like it may go Clayton this is well looking like it's going Clayton's way she's about uh, 25 meters back tough um, kick right the 15 meter channel yep oh my goodness I mean she is spot on oh unfortunately oh. just not enough mustard on it but yeah. the aim was perfect so, close. so nice effort from Dickens there you know, I feel like we can probably attribute that, that to uh, this being second day. I mean, if that had, if she had done that first game yesterday, I mean. Yeah, I think it would have been right down the post, right? And, uh, Split those posts right in two. This being the end of the third game, I mean, it's, it takes a toll. 
You, you guys played a lot of rugby yesterday. We were saying that there's going to be a lot of sore bodies, uh, you know, at night, and then to have to come out and do it again today, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, no doubt the uh, several hour drive that a lot of us have. We're just not going to do anything for <laughs> our <laughs> sore bodies. You get out, like. <laughs> take some. Uh, we get bathroom breaks. I'll be doing stretch breaks. <laughs> Keep my body loose. <laughs> She's at 53. I'm just going to suffer from the ride home. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about playing. Yeah, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure that, that can be attributed to rugby, though. <laughs> yeah, too many, too many years of it. Uh, I'm get back to work. So I'm going to say, well, why are you so sore? Yeah, rugby, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that seven-hour drive. <laughs> oh, oh, so you line up. A rough game. Oh no, I didn't play. <laughs> Okay, opting for the short line out here, uh, three. Kind of like these actually. Oh. Taken by, uh, taken by Clayton. Yeah, it looks like, is that the eight again? Um, Let's see. Let's see if we can get a number there. Sorry, folks. That looks to be, yeah, number and, eight. Wow, that was an interesting uh, kick. It looked like it came off the uh, outside of the foot and kind of worked backwards. backwards. Yeah. yeah. But, um,. That looks like... Is that Washington on the run again? I think it might be. Yeah, she's... Oh, wow, tough runner. Holy cow, is she, she making just, yards? Morris just barely able to catch up to her. Uh, but uh, again, Clayton, with their support being right there, I mean, they had... Super quick, like, right? Yeah, Boom. I mean, as soon as, like... Their support is right there, which, I mean... Let's no see this guys. young lady turn, turn around there and see if we can get... I, I believe it was Washington. And then she was helped her up number. by her buddy, uh, Alana, uh, Alana Walker. Okay, tap and go here. Okay, big charging run from the 13 Spremberg. Yeah. Try score? Yes, it was. So that's going to make it 27 with the kick to come, and those five points were Spremberg. I think you played with Spremberg last year uh, in the selects. I know the name's familiar. Maybe we've just been talking about talking about her a lot because she's doing the work out there. Yeah, I feel bad to say that it doesn't sound familiar in case. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, case maybe you're right. Play, but um, I think we did we did mention her quite a few times. She's Absolutely. Had a couple, uh, she had a couple. Well, if if uh, she wasn't uh, looked at for selects before, then she certainly should be. <laughs> <clears throat> so that. Uh, Makes it 27-0, Clayton over Morris uh, with uh, in the dying minutes of the second half here. Kick is up. It looks like Dickens is on the duty again. Yeah, we're in the uh, 20th minute here. <clears throat> looks like maybe that'll be game. It, it looks like it has been called here. Shockingly, um, no injury time this half. I mean, fantastic, that is, <laughs> right? That is uh, something that... We've hasn't been, been happening quite. today. <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially been... yesterday. They were definitely, uh, they were definitely some... Super tough kick. Not finding the target. That's going to be the game. Morris, uh, Clayton 27, Morris 0. Nice effort from both sides. Certainly Clayton on the front foot here and taking advantage of those moments. But Morris not putting their heads down and giving them a good game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Morris did not let up um, even, uh, even towards the end, knowing, knowing that maybe there wasn't. Um, wasn't any not a lot of hope not a lot of hope but yeah um, they definitely didn't they didn't let up and um you know it would have been really easy when um whoever whoever it was that got that uh, uh breakaway on the sideline it would have been really easy to just you know hey, yeah let, let it go happen. right hey, who cares what's another try but um to to have you know three or four Morris players right there um definitely speaks to their chasing uh, them down yeah definitely speaks to their um, the heart yeah the heart that they have for um, for the game and just like uh, perseverance. Yeah. Perseverance, the heart and perseverance, absolutely. And you, you got to play to the final whistle regardless, right? And you, you don't want to just, you know, take your foot off the gas. And Morris certainly did not do that. Young side, a lot of talent coming out, uh, you know, a couple more years of working together and, uh, you know, it'll be a formidable side. Yeah. You know, well, everybody goes through their rebuild years, right? Well, listen, uh, that's uh, pulling this game together it looks like we will have the valkyrie game against motley uh coming up here shortly i val i i wasn't sure valkyrie would be uh, 
uh, lining up today because they had some big injuries yesterday. You know, a lot of sides actually, but uh, good to see that they're uh, coming back for this final game. Yeah, and I did um, I did speak to the coach earlier about uh, the player that got carted off. Ortego. Uh, yesterday. She's not sure the number, but um, she she did walk out um, of the hospital yesterday. She's, oh, uh, good. She's yeah, fine. that's Hannah Ortego in the sixth jersey. So really glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. So she, they, he said that she'll be in the neck brace for a little bit, but um, overall she was, um, you know, she had movement and feeling in all of her extremities. So. Um, probably the best case scenario. Yes. Out of, um, uh, scary situation like that. Hundred percent, and really uh, gl glad that you had heard that, and we were able to share that with the audience at home as well. Hey, I let me leave you with the mic here because I'm going to make a quick uh, bio break and uh, run over to the uh, restrooms over there. Do you mind uh, calling the beginning of this game, and I'll sure. be right back. Yeah. Thanks, Reagan. So it sounds like um, against this Motley crew, uh, there's going to be, um, on the Valkyries, there's going to be several, um, I believe you said Raleigh Cobras. So it looks like we might have um, two Motley teams, more like. So uh, forgive us, we'll only be able to call the numbers as we don't have um, names attached to the numbers and we don't want to call them wrong.
No, no. Yeah, well, they got a couple minutes before they're They're warming up. They are seriously standing there. Hey guys, it's Taryn for Morris. 18th birthday, Slay. Um, Taryn, how do you think your uh, your weekend went? Uh, I think it was a very successful weekend. I think Morris really gelled together, and it was really exciting to watch us all come together as a team. And now I can just see us building on from this point. So it's super exciting, and I really see us doing great things this season. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, just giving them, giving them another minute for the uh, Motley team to get um, get jerseys on. Looks like they'll be wearing their old, uh, the old Morris jerseys. And, um, okay, let's go over again. and then, like I said, we'll have Atlanta Valkyries and Raleigh Cobras both wearing the blue um, Atlanta Valkyrie jerseys. And uh, Motley, the Motley team will be um, just across all the teams this weekend, so. Okay, folks, uh, this will be the uh, uh, final game of uh, two pretty exciting days down here for the inaugural uh, Rugby Showcase South, which <coughs> we uh, uh, were being hosted here at Guilford College by Christine Newcomb, uh, head coach of the women's program. It's been a fantastic two days down here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Really looking forward to doing it again. And uh, wrapping it up here with my pal Reagan King on the other mic from uh, Doylestown and uh, heading to uh, apply her talents uh, at Army uh, this fall and uh, here calling uh, the last game, which is going to be uh, a little bit of a motley on both sides, actually. It's uh, the, the sky blue jersey out there. The predominance of that team is going to be Atlanta Valkyries with uh, who did we say had joined them to kind of round out the numbers? Uh, the Raleigh Cobras. Raleigh Cobras, and then uh, taking the field over here in the old Morris jerseys is uh, a, a motley side made up of uh, multiple teams. So uh, rosters uh, are not going to line up names to numbers, so we're going to call it by the numbers and uh, try to give you um, the, the best we can for calling the game. Yeah. Sound good? Next time we got to bring a coffee maker. You don't have one in your trailer? No, we will. We will, definitely. <laughs> okay, balls up, opening kick. Uh, so, let's see. I would see. say we do, but we don't. <laughs> That's number 33 with a nice hard line through the... Uh, through, 100%. Through Valkyrie probably. looking good here. On the attack again. That 16 looks like Avery from uh, the Cobras. I believe it is. That's going to be a tough 16 to defend right there. Yep, number 33 back, uh, back through again. Nice way to wind down the weekend is to uh, get everybody a little bit extra playing time here in this game. Big attacking platform here from uh, the Sky Blue Jersey. Nice little pick and go off the back there. Just making the hard yards. 
uh, that the nine duties look like that might be uh, Scott Benson. I believe it is. Oh, I'm lucky. A little bit of a low pass. I think it'll be called for. Yeah. Uh, for a knock on. Yep, and there it is. Warmer jacket here if you want it. You good? I might put it on myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the uh, the weather has definitely changed uh, more towards early spring than what we had yesterday, which was that really nice sunny and 70 day. Um, but I, I don't know. I guess I, if I were on the field right now, I'd probably rather be playing in these conditions than full bolt sun like that. Yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, definitely on the field. Um, this weather was nice. Yeah, uh, nice I'll bet. Uh, nice little uh, breeze, you know, not as got awfully hot, but uh, yeah, right. well, <laughs> but like we were saying, the side is, uh, <laughs> is it's chilly, overcast, breezy, you know. Number four making a break here, a uh, real nice line break here, and it looks like, yeah, she will dot it down for five points there. So, Valkyries will take the lead in the early in the first half here. Uh, they've been working the ball well, uh, and it was just a matter of time before they were able to find uh, that space that they needed. But I tell you what. I think that, that might be a, that might have been Ari uh, Papa's. Oh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I forget, believe so. I do not, I uh, can't quite remember how to pronounce her name. But, um, I think it is Papa's. Papa's. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that pink camo jersey, you know, giving them a pretty, uh, pretty good defense there. It took some work for that sky blue jersey to work that ball in. Yeah, and another thing to note about um, adding a little extra level um, is that uh, while you know while the, Valky while the Valkyries do have some um, guest players on them, for the most part it's the same team. Whereas the Motley is, um, you know, it's 15 girls that maybe only three or four of them have ever played with each other um, at one given time, and just given no time to warm up and uh, gel together, that um, yeah, just to just to be putting up. Um, the defense and the structure that they are is, you know, in, it's pretty impressive. In, yeah, in and of itself. So um, that kick looks like it was good by Papa's. <laughs> she looks uh, a little bit of celebration there, and rightly so. And yeah, I, I think Reagan, you bring up a great point, right? It's, uh, you know, it, this is a game that takes cohesion, and you know, when you're thrown together and given a matching jersey, that that takes a little bit of time for that to build. You know, I think there's competent ruggers on that side. I think we'll start to see that cohesion build throughout the game, but it's not something that just shows up naturally at the opening whistle, to your yeah, point. Yeah, and I mean, you have a, like, there's, you know, you have on one side, you, you might, might have a team that has many good rugby players, and then you might have another team that has many good rugby players and also the cohesion. And just that cohesion adds, like, just in, like an incredible layer um, and, you know, helps that team perform so much better. So, a um, little unlucky slip in the backfield. Oh, a little through. bit of soccer play there. Well done, uh, too. Retrieved by the Valkyries. Valkyries, big on the front foot here. Taking big charge. Oh, nice little steal there. And that is, uh, that's Cookie uh, running through, doing, <laughs> doing, doing what she thing. does. Yeah. <laughs> Taken down, but looks to be, looks like they. Pick the ball back up. Yeah, releases, recollects. She's back on it. Yeah, yeah I don't, Boy, I, she's a hard, I, I could see what you mean about her wanting to, not wanting to play against that, right? <laughs> That's uh, yeah. uh, That woman's a force. Yeah, yep, so uh, 33 went into contact, and um, Cookie just grabbed that right up, did not give it a second look. So, um, looks like. The well, Valkyries. as tough as that is, I'm sure you gave her what for, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, looks like the Molly does have the ball back. Oh. What? I wonder what was called back here. That looked like, that momentum looked like it was. Uh, yep. And uh, Cookie will be uh, heading to Cardiff Met in the fall. Oh, is that right? Yep, over in Wales. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, we get, we're getting a card here. For something. Sydney got the card. Not Sydney. Sydney Z. Sydney Z. 
Do, do we know what the call, I guess, high tackle? Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's the only thing I can think of. But. And it looks oh, like that may penalty. have been called a penalty try. Oh. So um, evidently the, the ref decided that whatever the penalty was, um, if that penalty had not occurred, that uh, the Motley would have scored, which um, is uh, in this scenario is what would have caused uh, the penalty to give, or the ref to give a penalty try. So yep. that is seven points, no kick required. Um, and since the kick was made, we think we have 7-7. Seven, seven. So let's keep this honest. Get a time check here. Kept the clock running, so let's reset that. So well into the first half here. Uh, unfortunate yellow for uh, Valkyrie, so they're going to be playing uh, rugger down for the rest of this game, the rest of this half, and the second half. Uh, oh, pardon me, um, the rest of this half anyway. Um, it was yellow, right? It wasn't red. Yeah, it was yellow. Okay, so yes, so they'll they'll play. Uh, Rugger down for the next, pr probably through the end of this first half, and then we'll be able to even up for the second half. Yeah, it looks like uh, number 33 had a couple unlucky, uh, unlucky catches, but um, Kamali will have this ball back. Looks like kick attempt, and the uh, number 19 on the Valkyries will get that ball back and give it to uh, Pappas. Dish it out. Looks like the ball's dropped on the wing, unfortunately, but 16 picks it back up for the scrum. Oh, the, the one thing I would say for the pink camo jersey is uh, e even if you haven't played enough together, I think what can be worked on is that uh, ball from depth, right? Like when they were on the attack there, it looked a little bit flat. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit of a steeper line. And, and just taking that ball at pace, right? Because um, this uh, playing, like you say, the co cohesion coming out of the uh, sky blue jersey is there. It's also coming in the form of their defense. So the only way you're going to beat them is to take that ball from deep, get that head of steam, and hit those soft shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, now um, both, so when there's a player down in the scrum, which is um, in this case, uh, both players, both teams have to drop a player. Um, Correct. So Looks like both teams are opting to drop their eight man. Um, and that nice little pick off the back there, back yeah. Uh, the ball is ripped away by number two on the blue. A little unlucky, uh, unlucky yeah. pass, but. Uh, that looks like it back. went through the hands of Avery in the 16 jersey, which is uncharacteristic. Here she is on the run again, opts to dish it out to her colleague. Nice support. So good weekend of rugby. I, I heard you surprised the team this weekend. They didn't know you were coming, right? Is that right? Um, no, they knew I was coming. I surprised them last. I surprised uh, Morris last night. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, yeah, I, I misunderstood. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. So I surprised um, Morris, uh, the Wanohinis, and um, the Marauder. The Marauders were having a little uh, <laughs> block party at their hotel last night, and um, that was a lot of showed fun. Showed up. Uh, a couple of people knew, um, but I uh, showed up, and I brought my um, brought my speaker with the microphone, so uh, <laughs> they were able to. Dobbs was able to rock out with some karaoke last night. Uh, shout out to favorite? Todd for letting uh, letting the girls get up on the, the butt of his truck. <laughs> <laughs> I t that truck was rocking. We were talking about it earlier. Like that that hotel parking lot was like a like a Zach Brown concert. <laughs> <laughs> It was a lot of fun. We had the Six Nations games going over by the trucks and the food, and then over on the other side was uh, the karaoke inspired by you and the machine. And it was uh, uh, it was it was quite a night out in the um, Spring Hill Suites parking lot here in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah and I also uh, heard stories of the um, the karaoke that happened um, last month at uh, the EJRL Selects. Um, unfortunately, fortunately unfortunate that I wasn't able to make it down and enjoy all of the horrible singing but uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> you know but I heard that I, you know, I thank saw... God they're great ruggers and good <laughs> students because I don't see Grammy award winning uh, 
in, in any of their uh, in any of their futures, unless maybe they're writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I do think I saw plenty of uh, people Snapchat stories to hold me over. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, oh, I heard that they were better last night than they were. So. It, last night, there was some talent up there. I tell you what, I heard it from the other side. We were watching the Six Nations replays, and uh, I heard, heard some pretty good singing, actually. Yeah, I wonder if that was the, uh, the moms uh, when they that? <laughs> went up and <laughs> started singing. So, yeah, we had a great night there. Uh, we, we had a big uh, corned beef and cabbage and potato dinner that was uh, cooked up while we were all here by Lavinia Galarza and team. Uh, and then had a big spread and just had a, had a really fun time with a bunch of the teams together. And it was, it was great that you and your mom came over, too, to spend some time. Wow. Uh, Let, let's get like, back to this rugby. This is looking yeah. real good from the camo jersey. Yeah, Levin had um, a nice, uh, nice run. Looks like Cookie uh, made some space, passed it out. So what you were talking about, I think that cohesion starting to happen in this, uh, the end of this first half here. Which is nice to see. It's uh, you know that uh, camel jersey's given uh, given uh, uh, Atlanta Valkyrie a game here. Yeah, and it's definitely impressive to just watch like as um, how they develop just in the game. Um, number thirty or number three on blue is definitely giving them a run for their money in the scrum. Absolutely. Or in the ruck, um, was able to drive that over. Looks like it will be a penalty for something in the ruck. Um, Coming in from the side, it looked like. Yeah, that, yeah, you know, I, I've got to brush up on my uh, arm gestures as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I got to get signed up for that level 100 referee course because I think not so much to referee. I, I'm, I don't think I'll be doing that, but certainly just to kind of um, tighten up the calling, you know. Yeah. Can't hurt. Yeah, definitely when you got to um, compensate for your eyes. <laughs> Be aware of the uh, the arm gestures. That's it. Maybe glasses. Glasses could help too. Maybe I should remember to bring I hear those. Those are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah they work. <laughs> and a pair. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so line out uh, with uh, going to the uh, pink camel. Balls up. Okay, it's uh, no lift there, but that's all right. Uh, it looks like pink camel is going to stay with the ball here. Strong uh, rock there, and pink camo will take it away. Although blue stole it. Yeah. Um, nice support out on the blue. Oh boy. And that looks like maybe uh, Pappas again with the run. Uh, blue or pink was right there, got that, that ball back. But um, yep. So. That was a nice catch by that young lady on the far side. Hopefully we can oh. get her to turn around. Maybe they turn the ball. Looks like that was potentially a, I mean, ref put a, the wrong hand up, but um, it will be for blue, and it looks like they might kick the touch. Nice strong kick. Uh, made it pretty far, so. Um, it'll yeah, be they made some good yards on that kick. Okay, line out far side, blue, uh, blue throw in, 22 with good hands up top there, and they're uh, able to distribute the ball, moving it well. Little chip kick right there, the chase is on. No, oh, that's no. a big chase. Okay, but it's well fielded in the backfield. Great little inside step there. It's like taken down by two, uh, two Valkyries players. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that uh, that inside step was read well by the blue jersey, so they're not able to get uh, get that uh, that's that that <laughs> distance that they needed. Getting a little tongue tied after two days of uh, chatting away. Well, it's gonna be uh, camo moving. A little unlucky. Yeah. It, but um, he's not gonna call the knock on. on. Spins out of the tackle there. Big counter ruck here. Nice pill from that four. It's like a advantage to. Advantage to blue. Okay, calling it back to the mark. It's 
Sarah's backing him up the uh, necessary 10 right there. She's uh, Nice little offload there from the 24. You thought she was going to run that into contact. Instead, she draws in the defenders and dishes. Yeah, it's still really impressive for um, a team with several guest players on it to be um, just kind of on the same wavelength about keeping the ball and uh, mm -hmm. out of con or trying to keep the ball out of contact and uh, keeping the ball alive um, with several offloads is um, no doubt helping their game. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Blue's moving the ball well, and they, like we were saying, I think Pink Camel's really starting to come together as well. Go, 24 with the carry here. Oh, look at that ball poach. ripped away. Man! But it looks Boom. like they're going to be called for... Uh... <laughs> Ball's brought back. If if that two jersey's the same, that'd be Doyle in the two, the sky blue two jersey. She had a nice couple games yesterday. Oh, look at that. Looking for that space. Oh, it's brought down. I believe that is... I'm going to say Sarah's. What? Good run, Sarah! So that's Sydney's sister. And um, those who I played, uh, they played on ERA. So I um, can't remember which one. One of them is only 14. Is that right? Yep. Already playing for uh, Salty. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. Pretty impressive. Um, I, I want to say Sydney's the one that's 14. Okay, okay. I could be wrong, though. That's a good program, and maybe huh? Maybe she's That's... turned 15 by now, but uh, I know she definitely was a uh, pretty young and uh, really, um, you know, one of the youngest. I think, uh, you know, one or either youngest or the second youngest of the whole uh, of the whole trip. So to already be playing with Salty and uh, getting that development is really impressive. You had a nice trip uh, over to Ireland what, last summer. Yeah, last that? summer the year before. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good program. Mm -hmm. How many games did you play when you were over there? So the first year we played, we played three out of four of the provinces. Okay. I and um, so I think I had two games. Um, and then this year we played, I believe, all four of the provinces, and I had four games. How'd uh, how'd we fare over there this summer? This I past think, summer. So out of all, because one of the provinces only fielded one age group. Um, okay. So that's where the extra game came from. So um, I think out of the seven games, we won five of them. Not too bad. Yeah, that's a good showing. Yeah, definitely impressive. Um, and you know, they they really like um, they really like us coming over there and playing and um, giving them an idea of what they need to fix before they start playing each other um, during the normal season. So. Um, you know, and also getting to you know meet like meet people from you know outside of the country. Like out um, after our game, we uh, we um, we have a social with each other, and uh, they love to meet some Americans and uh, <laughs> have some love fun. To hear their accents. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just watching the replay here of. Uh, the uh, try scored by uh, number three in the sky blue jersey right there. They've been working the ball down the field. Uh, I think uh, Pink Camo was giving them a hard time, but it's just pressure after pressure after pressure. And, uh, you know, it's going to, you bend, you bend, you bend, and then you break. And uh, that's what you just saw right there. So dotting it down and putting it in a good position for the conversion kick to look like they could possibly make it 14-7 uh, to 7 right here. Yeah. Yeah, those trips overseas, I, I think those are great, great opportunities, and it's it's nice to know, it's nice to see that it's happening with more frequency, right? And that that kind of, you know, that, uh, that that shared knowledge base, you know, going back, like you, like you say, you're going over there and giving them an opportunity to take a look at where maybe the gaps are that they need to tighten up as the season comes in, and you know, uh, the U.S. getting a different jersey and going 3,000 miles over the pond and and kind of saying, hey, we're, we're, we're starting to arrive here and, uh, you know, we're starting to put out some good rugby. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, exciting. I also uh, was able to go to uh, Germany and Austria with um, a different selects team. And so it's really nice that, like, as we're, you know, we're still recovering from COVID, like, um, and as the U18 level is developing to see, like, more trips overseas. I know of a couple um, that um, may or may not 
be able to be mentioned, but um, but I know of a couple more in addition to, um, I believe NA Lions will be trying to take a team back to Heidelberg this year. And um, Vera That's great. is also trying to do a trip, take the girls to Spain this year um, and potentially Canada. So um, for Ira, so. Yeah, was, oh, um, big run here. And Avery gets the break off that uh, little dish from her partner and she's off to the races. Yeah, wow. No one's catching her. No, no, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, look at look at that pace, Reagan. Oh my there was God! No catching her. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow! I, one time in my life, I'd like to run like that. I, one time. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Downhill uh, with the wind. Yep. Maybe in a go kart. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very quizzical look you gave me when I said that. Like that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know. Maybe once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dial it back to that second score, actually. Were we good for the kick there? We were chatting away, I think. I think she was, I think it was good. Yeah, so let's call that 14. And now we're going to put five on that. So that's 19 with the kick to come. And we got a dead pen. So let's make it, we'll just scratch it out here, 19. And we'll have to revert back to it. Let's see, I think. That, that's good as well, so that's going to be 21. Yeah, but uh, as we were talking about, the um, just the development of U18s um, as a whole is really lending way to, um, you know, not only seeing, um, not only being able to see each other, you know, other teams, like, in cases like this, but also, you know, across the, um, across the world, so. Absolutely. Um, really yeah. just really ex makes me excited for the future of the U18, you know, U18s and just um, rugby in the U.S. as a whole. I, listen, I, I think we, we, we talk about it uh, on the podcast all the time, and it's like uh, we, we, we've been very privileged to, you know, uh, be involved with uh, youth rugby for, you know, better part of a decade, and you can clearly see, like... <laughs> You can clearly see the, the step change in the quality of U.S. rugby at the U16 and the U18 level. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think we, we talk about it on the podcast. I know you've heard it a bunch uh, that, you know, we're, we're a decade out of the World Cup. And we think that, you know, both from uh, a women's and a men's perspective, that if this growth rate continues, that we'll, we'll be able to put out some very good competitive sides when those cups come to the United States in less than a decade. Yeah, absolutely. Which is uh, that 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 feels good, and it's it's great to see. And I think what we're watching today, what we've watched, you know, had the privilege of watching yesterday and today, is kind of the uh, uh, the, the the real roots beginning of that. You know, that that platform that's going to launch us into uh, a, a much more competitive nation on the national scale, on the international scale. Yeah, yeah, and and it all uh, like you said, it all roots, and it stems from um, bringing up the level of rugby at this level. Um, in order to be able to play at a higher level at the next level. Uh, without you know? question. So, um, I mean, this, like, if you look back, you know, five years, there's, like, I mean, this like this wasn't happening. You, no. you didn't have, um, you know, however many teams that you have here this weekend coming from, you know, up in, like, north and south coming to play each other. From um, Connecticut to yep. South Carolina. Yeah. And everybody in between. Yeah. And um, so just definitely... Uh, like I said, definitely makes me excited for the future of uh, rugby, and um, yeah, like you said, like it's putting all about you know progressing and like being able to eventually put um, a nice solid team in the World Cup. Yeah, out there, you know, and, and you know, if you want a really clear example of how the game is ratcheting up, I think you can point to kicking, right? And I think if you go back five, six, seven years ago, there was not a lot of kicking in the U.S. game, certainly not at the U18 and U16 level. And now you're seeing kicking, it's, it's, it's being used at the right times, it's being executed uh, correctly, and it's effective. And that, that to me is like uh, the, the, the mark of a changing game, like an, an evolving and improving game. Yeah, and um, I mean we've seen kicks back and forth like all weekend, and um, yeah, you know, speaking to that a couple of years ago, uh, Doylestown was in the state championship, and uh, Nina Mason, um, who is now playing at Life, um, and you know she made the first um, 
you know, drop goal from, you know, off of a penalty for wow. three points and really had no, like, didn't really affect their score at the end of the game at all, but, um, you know, it's the first time we'd really ever, you know, seen it done in a high school level, and, um, I mean, I've seen it, I think at least, you know, I've, I've seen it twice this weekend alone. Yeah. I mean, I just think that speaks, like, and those are just in my games, so I think just, like, speaks to the testament of um, just, like, how much we are improving, and, like, the more we play at um, the lower levels, the, you know, the more we're able to um, progress at the higher levels. You had some of your fan base behind you giving you the rabbit ears. That's why I was chuckling. Some technical difficulties as we're getting goodbyes here, but uh, yeah, Reagan, I can't agree. I can't disagree with that at all. It's, uh, you know, you're right. We've been seeing it all weekend, and it's it's being well executed at the right times. It's, uh, you know, and it's 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 a it's it's another tool in the toolbox of USA Rugby, right? And and getting out there. And, and giving, creating a, another advantage that maybe wasn't there a while back. Yeah, and it also uh, definitely helps, you know, players individually. Um, you know, there's there's a high like there's a high level of play across all these teams, but um, you know, the, there's a couple things that make girls stand out for colleges, and like that can be, um, you know, at this level, like being in a, like a really good tackler can definitely help you, and um, kicking can definitely help you, and a good you know, line out good throw, line out throw, like yeah. there's just certain things that like. Even if you may be not as good at something, you know, like, you know, same level or maybe just a little bit less as um, one of your teammates, but you have one of those skills, it can definitely put you, give you an edge up on, um, yeah. you know, if you're looking to play at that next level. So that whole um, player kind of thing, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. Yeah, being able to do multiple things, you yeah. know, just shows how versatile you are as a player and shows that uh, you can, you know, like wherever that college coach may want you, you're able to do it. So. One of the other things we were talking about is, a, and as the game improves, right? And it used to be, you know, it, you you had to put players into spots where maybe uh, their skill sets weren't being used to the best of the team's abilities, right? Just because you had holes there and you had to fill the gaps. And I think one of the things, and we, it, certainly with the EGRL and the other select sides around the country, is like when you bring that player pool together and you can put. You know, somebody like yourself who really belongs in that two jersey, in the two jersey, right, and bring those skill sets. Or, you know, you're putting, uh, you know, JoJo Mignoni in the 10 where, you know, she belongs, that kind of thing. It, it makes for such a better game of rugby, right? Yeah. Instead of plugging holes because, oh, you know what? We better put Reagan at 15 because she's a great tackler and we, we got to have her back there, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas instead, you know, we're putting you in, in the right spots. Like you're at the breakdowns, that two's there, hands are in, right? It's yeah. That's something else I think that's changing with the game too and with the expansion of it and a bigger player pool. Yeah, and I, I think it also helps, um, you know, the players play like how they want to. Say you do have... Um, you know, Jojo Mignone like at you know 15 because that's where she's needed. But like, yeah. when you put her at the 10, that's where she's comfortable. Changes the game. Able to play, you know, so much better, and um, just because you know, just because she's comfortable there. So, um, you know, in addition to um, being able to um, put people where they should go versus um, where you need them. Yeah, versus where you need them, and yeah. then also you know, it's just like it helps on multiple fronts. So. 100 percent. We uh, we're, so we're back with second half action of uh, pink camo and uh, uh, Valkyrie. Valkyrie being made up of predominantly Valkyrie, Atlanta Valkyrie players and the Cobras. Cobras yep, and uh, Motley is uh, probably four or five teams that have been pulled together. Right now, the score is uh, in favor of the sky blue jersey, uh, Atlanta Valkyrie at 21 uh, to zero for Motley. But Motley coming together. Yeah, I mean, definitely from the from their first play now, it's gelled together a little bit more. So yeah, um, yeah, exciting to it'll be exciting to see. Um, yeah, and I think that it's uh, you know that cohesion is isn't a given. Like you know, it's got to come together, and I think we're starting to see that. Yes. Oh wow! <laughs> Holy. Let's get a jersey number there and give some credit where credit is due. That was a hard charging number run in that 12. 12. She brought, definitely brought a couple people with her. Yeah, she certainly did. <laughs> Just pumping the legs and pushing, pushing. Uh, looks like that was. Offsides? Offsides or. Oh no, not, not rolling, rolling away. away. So it'll be a penalty. That's Alexa, Alexa Kirshner. That's going to take that ball. Um, 
Handing it off to... She's with Cardinals, Spencer. correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, uh... Coached by the husband and wife team, uh, the Tices, great folks. That's mon uh, Monster, as they call her. Yeah, so uh, Taylor. Up. Joelle Taylor. Yeah. She had uh, uh, quite a, a few nice performances down at the Moose Lodge in Largo, Florida, a couple weeks back, uh, uh, singing away. <laughs> oh, good, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a crazy night. <laughs> we were talking about it. We, were, yeah. <laughs> um, unlucky. It looks like a little knock on, but maybe they. I ref think didn't catch that. She and uh, Catherine O'Boyle were the stage on the stage down there that night. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you, you would have enjoyed their, uh, rousing renditions. <laughs> what song did they sing? Jeez, I don't recall. I'd have to. Last night. Uh, even last night. Oh, missed well, it. O'Boyle is a big country fan, uh, yeah, and she was belting out a few beauties. I think there was I some. Heard, uh, I heard Carrie Underwood last night. Oh, did you? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, here we are, uh, about halfway through the day, and the sun's deciding to start to come out now, which has been a. Uh, I think. Yeah, a, I believe it was before he cheats that he, uh, that that someone was singing last night. They were doing a pretty good job of it. There, there was some talent there last night. Uh, look, uh, it looks I heard like much better than last. Than, yeah. Than last month. Yeah, the bar was set uh, pretty low down in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. Uh, so I, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Um, you know, Pink Camo's starting to put something together. Um, it was almost turned over there, but uh, they're going to kick to touch and easily found. Right, that's uh, again number 15, Alexa Kirshner for that kick. Yeah, she's a, she is a, a great in that 10 roll for, uh, for Cardinals. That's a super competent side. So uh, short lineouts this weekend, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a, a little windy and I mean, you have to play to the um, play conditions, to the strengths, play to the conditions. Um, so, um, so and just also, opting for that first jumper, maybe a cheese ball to the one, that kind of thing. And yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, especially this morning when the ball is dewy, you know, like it's Yeah, you're not going to like, second yeah. jumper, right? So, uh, you know, it, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention once again that uh, uh, I think it was Hannah Ortego who went down and was taken off on a board yesterday for Valkyrie in the number six jersey. Uh, Reagan, you uh, you made mention that you heard that she walked out of the uh, hospital and on her own. She was able to move. Yeah, no and blurry feel. vision, yeah. no, yeah. yeah. Move and feel all of her limbs. So, um, like I said, probably, probably, you know, best case scenario. Um, yeah. Coming out of like a situation like that. Um, definitely scary for her and scary for her team to like see something like like that happen to one of your teammates. So, we had a scare as well out of Aspatuck yesterday with uh, Kylie. I think it was. So that's a. Uh, yeah, I did see her um, walking around earlier. That's good. Um, not moving. Yeah, you never like to see those boards come out, you know, and it's uh, and we're we're super glad that it worked out the way that it has and we've been able to report back so good for both those players yeah. rugby to be played in the second half we're about to keep you on the schedule this is the last game of uh, a day and a half of great high school girls rugby uh, which is being hosted down here by Guilford College and our good friend uh, Christine. Sun just popped out. You're looking at this beautiful pitch on field one. I'd, I'd be hard pressed to tell you that there's better conditions to be played when it comes to a field uh, down here than uh, in uh, beautiful Greensboro, North Carolina. Um. It's really run without a hitch. I mean, you know, and that's. Uh, 
that's pretty uncommon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, injury time making, you know, making yeah. things run a little behind yesterday, but uh, got all the games in and um, I think we're... The university experience, come see Christine because this is a beautiful campus down here and, and it's a great rugby facility of the Rugby Showcase South. This is the first time we've done it. Uh, and uh, we're, uh, we were all saying last night that we're expanding uh, the reach as we go forward yeah, and growing the game. Take, that take by number 23 in the pink. Yeah. Um, I believe she's also with the Cardinals. Like this pink camo. Got support from the pink camo, but a couple chasers on the blue, but it doesn't look like they're going to catch her. <laughs> she will dot that down. And, uh, that was fantastic. I tell you what, like, uh, th th she didn't look back one time and just it was head forward, eyes up, and I'm, I'm putting it down for five. Yeah. So that's going to bring the score. 21, met her in the try zone, so. Um, Once again. Ever. <laughs> now. In your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine they're running? We, we, can, we can dream. <laughs> Kicking duties here, am I correct? Uh, yeah. So yeah. A little bit of chase there. Um, Flags are up. Looks like it's good. Yeah. So hey, that's uh, making it a bit of a game here. It's 21-14. There's just one score converted try between the two here. And uh, still plenty of rugby. I'm going to say, without looking, we've got at least 10 minutes. Let's take a look. Impressive looking at oh, your yeah. little tally um, with the <laughs> no, no pen. <laughs> <laughs> Just scratching it into the paper. Can we Might not be get able this? to find a scratch on me if you want to write it in blood. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it going. I believe you. To bring two pens with you. That's right. <laughs> Kirshner like bounces Kirshner off that one. Ball back and kicks it for an open backfield. What a great idea! What great heads-up rugby play that was right there. And she's gonna and get it. Twenty-one will catch. I think that's twenty-one that got the ball, but uh, Kirshner was right there to meet her. So um, Kirshner kicks it. It's then received, and she makes the tackle on it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Coaches who are watching, that's Kirshner with the Cardinals. Oh, big hammering run here. Still going. Shakes out of that tackle. Nice work there. Still going. Jeez, what do you figure? 50 yards on that at least. A Little bit of a wobbly bounce there. Hey, we got a line break here for Pink. Oh, looks uh, like it was called back by the uh by the ref. Yeah, offsides. Pink Camo putting some stuff together here in the second half. So as we said, we're in the, uh, call it the fourth quarter here, uh, 10 minutes to go. Score is 21-14, uh, Valkyrie in the sky blue and Motley uh, in the pink camo as we've been calling them. Slicing run here. Oh wow, that's the number two. I think if it's the same two as yesterday, that's Doyle who puts it down for five. So that's gonna make it 26-14, kick to come. Man, this is a beautiful complex. I mean, that sun pops out. You can really just beautiful green grass, nice little crown on the pitch so it drains well. It's got the ditches to the side. I mean, this is really well done. Yeah, I like that. Like our, our pitch, my home pitch is like a bowl. <laughs> well, yeah, well, uh, at, least, at least it's grass, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, naturals, uh, you know, they, listen, not, not taking any shots at turf, but turf's a lot. Uh, a lot harder on the knees and uh, the ankles and everything, and uh, it's, it's certainly uh, less taxing to play in a situation like this. 
Yeah, and I do like that it's, uh, it's all grass. It makes the softer. Yes, it does. Softer impact, so you can just get dirt and not scratch it. <laughs> we uh, the old boys went over to Ireland uh, for our 10th annual Never to be Repeated Again trip, and uh, Castle Island has a great home pitch. It's uh, You really don't mind getting tackled over there. It's kind of like uh, dropping you on pillows. Yeah. It's a fun, that's a fun little weekend. The weather was soft as usual. Skies open up just before the game starts every year. <laughs> Number five, I know that red scrum cap, I believe that that's is. That's red. I think yeah. It's yeah. I uh, was talking to her at over frozen yogurt yesterday after <laughs> after the game, and it looks like um, she's potentially looking to go to Cardiff with Cookie, so that'll be pretty exciting. Oh wow! Okay, Going very cool. Uh, Cardiff met. Um, I, they, we actually have uh, a homegrown uh, uh, young man over there from the Morris program. Uh, that's Luke Matthews. He's actually on the uh, coaching staff there, and. Um, kind of on the uh, health and wellness piece of it with um, uh, sports psychology. Nice, really large breakaway. Oh, wow. By uh, Boy, Sarah what a hell of a chase, from, though, huh? Oh. Chased down from, looks like she's going to pick the ball back up, but taken down again by number 10 on the pink camo. And they're going to reset, and that was Sarah Z. Um, that was a hell of a series of play, huh? And it was a nice... Oh yeah, really strong run. Yeah. I mean, it was... And I love that when you see that heads up play of getting tackled and you're free and you're released and pick it back up. Like, uh, that's such a skill. I mean, it, yeah, and it's just a couple, you know, it's a couple more meters, you know, and yeah. um, especially when your support may be a little bit behind that, you know, it can make all the difference of whether or not your support can get there and you can keep the ball or not. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So it, it looks like we may have gotten the try there as well. So that's going to put five points on what I believe was a good kick over here, which would have been 28. Uh, so that's going to make it 33. I believe. Sounds about, sounds pretty good. 33, and then there's a kick about to happen here. I didn't see him put his hand up, but I do think they're having a kick. So I think that was a try. Yeah, yeah, I, I think... Uh, you know, uh, the, the effort there from uh, Z uh, was then finished off by the young lady with the uh, shock of blonde hair over there, if we can try to get a number off the back of that jersey. But she's had a pretty uh, pretty impactful weekend, number 32. Word on the girl who left yesterday in the ambulance? With yeah, she's uh, walked out of the hospital uh, uh, last night and under her own power. Awesome. Yeah. Got it. And I think it's also um, important to note, since we've been talking about um, commitments, that Alexa Kirshner recently committed to Quinnipiac. Wow, good program. Yeah. So um, they'll be lucky to have her. Absolutely. Kick was good. That makes it 35-14 uh, to uh, Valkyrie uh, against Motley right now. Yeah, they will be definitely happy to have her. I, I, I agree. I mean, that's a pretty storied program in, the, uh, in women's rugby, right? I mean, they've got... Uh, as far as I know, four national titles under their belt, I believe. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, Wes Carroll's uh, coach, whose name escapes me right now, was on a couple of those teams as well. Taylor. Taylor. Um, so, yeah, big, big program. Lots of history. <laughs> 19, catches the ball. She's going to run in, and oh, speaking of, um, Alexa's gonna, or Kirshner is gonna lay her out. Wow, yeah, a little slow getting up there. That was a good stiff tackle. So into the 17th minute of play here in the second half, probably about three, four minutes to go, depending on uh, any stoppage time that was being held there. Advantage, and it looks like the arm gesture we might have been coming in from the side. Advantage being played through right now for um, Sky Blue. No advantage gain, so they're going to bring it back to the spot of penalty. From the side. Defense. 
Well, things are looking like they're getting packed up here. Baby, go! The ball goes out of bounds. Yeah. Right at the five. Ball found touch and it's gonna go to Pink Camel. Okay, burning a little clock time here. I'm sure Pink Camel's not too happy about that. So uh, once again, just a refresher, uh, Atlanta Valkyrie in the sky blue, uh, 35 to uh, Motley, uh, 14 in the pink camel. Motley takes that ball. Oh, that is unlucky. super unlucky. Knock on by pink on that one, so it's going to be scrum to blue at the five meter mark. It's not a good spot for uh, for pink to have given up that knock on right there, but those things no, happen. Definitely not. But uh, I mean, blue's not going to be mad about that, so. No, they, they certainly aren't. Nice, uh, and certainly because of the, you know, nice. What do you think, eight man sneak here? Speed. Well, maybe I don't not. see anyone no. over there, so I mean there was no one on yeah. that side. I that I definitely probably would have looked for that. Even yeah. If, um even the nine just running it in from there. Yeah, a little pop pass off the back right there and mm -hmm. off you go. Okay, knock again. Knocks at this point in time, I think you're just tired bodies out there. Yeah, I mean a lot of these uh Players for some of these players, I think this is their fourth game. So, yeah, um, that's a lot of rugby in two a days. A lot of rugby. <laughs> and the contact area has been tough this weekend. I mean, they're. Yeah. I mean, super physical game. Just unbelievable. Like on, every, on every side, so. Um, Pink's gonna get it. Back. Maybe can't quite see it, but. Looks like it's gonna be another scrum for a knock on, maybe, and that'll be game. Well, that's it. So final score is 35 to Atlanta Valkyrie in the sky blue jersey to 14 in Motley. But uh, really, I think a really nicely played game by both sides. And, you know, you, you, Greg, and you made a great point at the beginning. It's, uh, you know, these are uh, uh, Valkyrie was cobbled together with um, uh, Raleigh. Uh, no, Cobras. pardon me, Cobras. And then, uh, you know, the uh, pink camel was a, an amalgam of four or five different teams. So it takes a little bit of time for both sides to get the footing under them, but they really put on a really nice game of rugby, in particular in the second half. Yeah, I mean, just super impressive, like especially knowing that, um, you know, a lot of them hadn't played together before. So um, to put up the competition that they did, um, I mean, just, you know, they were able to put up 14 points um, on the pink side that, um, you know, like it really just speaks to, uh, like to how quickly they can gel together. and. Um, it was looking more structured towards the end of it. So, I, I agree. Um, they only improved, you know. Like yeah, yeah. I think there's co it's 30 competent ruggers out there, and it just takes a little bit of time to start to understand where one another are on the field, and that play starts to come together, and those passes start to come together, and we get a great second half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep, and, uh, now that the sun's out, I felt a little bit of warmth there. <laughs> that, so, that, that does feel much exciting. better. So a quick recap of where we are right now and a quick shout out to Christine Newcomb, head coach here at Guilford College for what's been a great day and a half of uh, high school girls rugby here. And um, thank you to uh, all the parents who make this happen. Uh, Reagan, always a pleasure. Uh, had a great weekend out there and uh, really enjoyed it. Oh, oh, anytime, anytime. So uh, signing off from uh, down here in beautiful uh, Greensboro, North uh, EGRL will be